attendance today. Thank you all the city commission for being here. Um, got a hangover, Commissioner Sorensen? I think I'm all right. Got a little tea going on this morning, so I'm good. Okay, okay. Well, late night for me, though. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we, uh, we inaugurated a new restaurant that opened in Fort Lauderdale called Salt 7 last night. And uh, was it? it's really great. It's, good. it's an amazing restaurant, amazing location. Uh, um, you know, being in the middle of an urban environment is that there's always going to be a challenge as far as, uh, um, you know, noise issues and so forth. But I thought they were very, very respectful last night they turned the noise you know the music was down but it's was, it was, it was packed with a lot of people so we, we doing better back there no you're better off <laughs> all right so we'll have yeah with the back of the room talking we can't hear the mayor so we'll, let's just let the mayor keep going and we'll figure out how to get sound to the back of the room. okay <laughs> so um has the has the video begun Start yeah, start recording. Recording in progress. Great. Good morning, everybody. Good morning to the City Commission uh, uh, Goal Setting Workshop uh, this January 29th, 2021. 21. Wow. Um, just a couple of announcements. Uh, this City of Fort Lauderdale uh, uh, Commission meeting is going to be held both in a virtual and in person format. The public will be able to listen to and view this meeting at www.fortlauderdale.gov forward slash FLTV, uh, www.youtube.com forward slash City of Fort Lauderdale, all spelled out, as well as on uh, our typical uh, TV channels, channel 78 and AT&T Uverse channel 99. Uh, there'll, be no, uh, um, there'll be no public participation, although the public is certainly invited Welcome to uh, to listen in and to hear the, the well, thoughts. Well, listen in and hear the change. Uh, Rufus, you gotta unmute. You gotta mute yourself. Okay, uh, and to listen to the exchange of ideas that will be taking place here uh, in this in this uh, workshop. So um, we have an agenda in front of us, and, uh, um, and let's, so let us begin. Uh, it's now 9:10. Perfect timing. Uh, so, 2020 commission priorities, <clears throat> accomplishments, and successes. Uh, Mr. Lagerbloom, Mayor. Yes, I'll start this morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, commission. And, uh, good morning to our uh, staff here today in, in, uh, in City Hall. Um, we'll take a couple minutes just to recap a little bit of what happened in the last year um, before we move into planning for the for the future year. If I take us back. A year ago today, or a year ago this time, um, some of the things that we're actively involved with at that moment, just to go back down memory lane a little bit, we had uh, been through a, a major water pipe break in the city where our city had lost um, water to the city because of a directional drill into a pipe up by the airport. We were right in the middle of some pretty massive sewer pipe breaks um, in January of last year. We were just getting ready. Um, to uh, have the, the first ever soccer game in our new stadium that was ramping up as we were uh, moving uh, through January. We were getting ready for a St. Patrick's Day parade. Um, we were on the heels of a hurricane um, deployment for Dorian and Isaias. And uh, it was a very different time. We weren't saying the word COVID-19 a year ago today. And so as I put into perspective some of the things that we did in the last year, um, it's just with the lens that all those things were, that kind of puts us back into the moment back in January of, of last year. Some of the commission priorities that I want to report on, um, starting with homelessness and, and housing opportunities. Um, I think we were the first, believe it or not, the first court to come back um, in service and online with our community court in Broward County. Um, in the, in the COVID-19 world, we set up a tents in Holiday Park worked with the state to do COVID testing to then move people into community court um, in tents on virtual settings. And since then, expanded that back to where we're now meeting at uh, back in the commission chamber. So community court was one of the first things to come back. Um, just of note, 25 participants in that community report, in that community court received housing um, or, um, to coming to the community court. So 25 um, actual success stories of finding housing. 
um, in, uh, in, in that outreach. Uh, with our United Way partnership, they provided 150 rapid rehousing opportunities, over 61,000 meals, um, and 32 individuals with case management and support services. So a great partnership with the United Way has yielded some, some real results. Um, some success in the year with, with HAPWA, uh, provided financial assistance to 734 participants and non-financial assistance to just over 1,000 people in the HAPWA program. Um, and uh, with the HAPWA CARES Act, we, uh, you know, we were able to transition some people from being homeless to uh, rental assistance and hotel vouchers, over 120 individuals in that program. Um, if I move into infrastructure, gosh, that was the the, the name or the, the word that we used so many times this last year. Um, with the sewer pipe break, the main spine of the sewer system that we had, uh, the break on of that seven and a half mile redundant project, uh, five miles is completed and the project will be complete. Uh, we hope in June of this year where the entirety of that seven and a half mile major uh, infrastructure project is, is complete. Um, as you know, we implemented a new stormwater rate structure uh, that uh, changed from the monthly billing to the annual uh, billing with the, with the tax bill and uh, we hope to move forward with the construction capital projects that uh, the new stormwater rate contemplated. Um, completed over 100 uh, I, &I projects. We've talked about I, &I and how that increases capacity in our sewer system. Um, and to date, uh, there's many pro uh, projects ongoing. Uh, but we've completed over 100 of those in the, uh, in the calendar year. Uh, consent order. It seems like just so long ago that we were negotiating consent order. There's two phases in that consent order, uh, phase one and phase two. Phase one is 100% complete, um, and phase two is at least 50% complete. So we are ahead of schedule, um, have missed no deadlines, and uh, are moving forward with all of the requirements of that consent order on the timeline that we're supposed to keep moving forward on. Uh, the commission adopted a comprehensive plan and a downtown master plan. That's of note to highlight this year. Um, and with respect to transportation and traffic, uh, we've got eight city projects that are approved as a part of the surtax program in Broward County, and uh, many more hopefully as we move forward into the future. Um, and uh, substantially completed the construction of the downtown mobility hub. I know that's been a a work in progress, but uh, just across the street from City Hall, that work is coming to a conclusion and hopefully will be the precursor into um, the design and construction of a joint government complex. So that uh, is good work there. Um, the waterway quality, uh, we've implemented the weekly waterway quality testing, as you know, and, and are distributing those results to the public so that we have transparency there. Um, and uh, we amended our ordinance limiting the use of fertilizer during the rainy season. Um, and additional focus on water quality. I'm sure we'll be talking about it today. I think there's going to be some interest in moving forward with that as a commission priority. Uh, with respect to resiliency, uh, the Isle of uh, Palm seawall was completed um, this last year. The Cordova seawall underway and it's substantially completed, uh, hopefully for completion by May, by May of this year. Um, we utilized grant funding to retrofit 16 homes with impact windows, 14 with new roofs, and 16 with hurricane doors. Um, and we're uh, looking at areas of repetitive flooding and developing mitigation strategies there. With, uh, with respect to streetscape um, and tree enhancements, uh, we adopted a new tree ordinance uh, that's anticipated to be adopted in spring of 2021. Um, the Breakers Avenue project design is at 30% uh, complete. Um, the parking up in the North Gulf area that includes a streetscape component is substantially complete and will be finished off as we move into spring, and uh, we're working on the A1A streetscape project, which is to be uh, completed later this year. Done lots of median work. I know that was a uh, issue or a priority of the, of the commission to do uh, medians and beautify those. Uh, we've enhanced medians on Sunrise Boulevard, Sistrunk, A1A, Federal Highway, Commercial, uh, Broward Boulevard, Imperial Point, Northeast 13th Street, Island Capri, and up in the landings. Of, uh, North and commercial. Um, the uh, police building is uh, is well underway, and we anticipate to break ground in the summer of uh, this year, 2021, with a completion in the fall of 2023. Uh, we acquired land for uh, EMS substation, the new fire station 88, 
Uh, fire Station 8 is open, and we have one fire station left to be able to close out the fire bomb, and that is Fire Station 13, and that should be moving forward this year. Police implemented the shot spotter technology. Amazing as to how many uh, gunshots happen in the city that we have no idea of, uh, but it uh, has proven to be a good use of technology quickly in the identification and solving of, of, of gun crime. Um, with respect to growth, uh, we've got an impact fee analysis that uh, hopefully will be complete uh, in the next month or so. And our DSD group is completing their 3D development map so that we can visualize development and infrastructure improvements in our city and particularly our downtown. Um, and finally, I'll just report on the CRA build outs that in fiscal year 2020, uh, we uh, provided more than $650,000 in incentives to the property and business improvement program. And in 2021, um, we have budgeted almost $12 million for all of the incentive programs um, that uh, hopefully will be built in our, in our CRA. So a busy year amongst the time when we were in the office, out of the office, COVID was here. We figured out how to work in a Zoom world. We figured out how to work uh, remotely. Uh, nothing really stopped in uh, a testament to the folks that kept the, the wheels of our city moving as we, um, as we delivered services in 2020. So, a good look back, and, and then I hope to uh, have a good look forward this morning. So thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, does anyone have any questions of Chris at this at this point? Or if any of the commission has anything they'd like to specifically highlight from 2020 that I might have missed that you just remember as a great uh, movement forward in our city in 2020. No questions? Okay. Um, can I ask... <coughs> This TV because I can't see my commission. Is this like, yes? Thank you. Um, Okay, so uh, I have a couple of comments with regard to several of the items that you brought up. Uh, with regard to homeless, um, Uh, there are a lot of challenges that we had this past year, um, and uh, being able to secure some CARES Act money support to try to get us over the hump during the summer. Um, but uh, we we'll, we're going to be talking more about that today going forward. What opportunities there are for us? Um, and the, with regard to the sewer infrastructure, um, did uh, that? timeline that you uh, described to us that we will complete the project by June of this year. Does that include all surface reparations as well, or just the pipeline itself? The pipe should be done sooner than June. So that would include all of the you know, remediation and bringing, there's the a lot of, there's a lot of bumpy roads out there right now. And there are a lot of bumpy roads. And those, the, the bump, bumpy roads are because we'd like to just pave them once. And so if the roads are still bumpy, uh, I'll use Fifth Street as a good example of Victoria Park. They just repaid that uh, Fifth Street from Federal Highway over towards uh, 1713. Um, and that's because now all of that work is done in that area. So as work is becomes 100% complete underground, they go back in. And right. So it would be, is it a reasonable expectation that the surface um, um, repairs will be done by June, or is that a separate timetable? Or is that? Uh, yeah. Good morning, Mayor, members of the Commission. Uh, yes, it would be done. And in fact, what I'm trying to do is uh, make it a little better to at least have where the projects have been done, uh, then do at least the first layer of asphalt that, that the pump kind of produces. So we are working on uh, you know, that particular plan. So hopefully, if we are able to do that, it is going to provide much relief than what you see now. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, with regard to stormwater, um, we, we originally identified uh, seven adaptation action areas and the commission voted to, um, to uh, issue a bond in order to secure the funding for that. Um, in the meantime, I, I, can you clarify whether or not we added another area vis-a-vis uh, um, Melrose Park, Melrose Manors to that initial list, or did we not do that this time? 
turn again to Ross. I know we're doing work in Melrose as it relates to their current infrastructure and the drainage ditch and all the good stuff that we talked about around the tropical storm. Yes. Um, but let me turn it over to Raj and yeah, talk uh, about storm water there. Mayor, uh, although it has not been part of our seven major drainage basin, but that doesn't mean uh, that doesn't mean that we are not working on it. Uh, we have identified uh, where the outfall pipes are, how they are connected, and we are working very closely with the consultant to to uh, develop a design, uh, you know, design criteria. And even though it is not funded by uh, by the uh, by the bond money, uh, we are still working on that design and see how we can how we can fund it or how we can reprioritize some of the other projects based on the intensity of the problems we face in those two neighborhoods. Okay, so the the announcement of the recent grant that we were we were given, I think it was 104 million or something that we we're going to apply so towards stormwater. To, uh, the the WIFI program. Yes. Right, right. Is has can any of that money be programmed to help um, pay for the additional uh, stormwater um, uh, projects that we have now, including Melrose? Yeah, I mean, we are, we are looking at all options. And anywhere, uh, the biggest thing is that we need to have some plans done so that we can identify what the cost is going to be, what are the, what are the underlying conflicting uh, issues, the permitting part, you know, they are very critical because it's a very large community. So we are all working on it, and any money we can get, we are going to fast track. Okay. So do you want to take a step to it with you and explain maybe to the commission how that benefits us and how we leverage better borrowing rates and all? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we're in the process of doing bond validation for the stormwater because it is a new revenue source. So, um, but we will have borrowing from two different sources, one through the public market, second through the the EPA program, which will give us up to 49% of the project costs. Um, so that's somewhere between 98 million and that 104 that was in there. Um, the, the rates that we have in our tax bills now are programmed to generate enough revenue to pay off $200 million of debt. Um, so to the extent, as Rob says, that we need to find out how much everything costs, and if things, you know, something costs less, then there's more money in there. So we have, we'll have 200 million available for the projects and how they divvy it up. Is, is it's all good. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, you made mention of the consent order. Now that consent order, I believe was entered into in 2016. If I'm not mistaken. Uh, 17. 17. So we had 10 years in which to complete the work, uh, with that was contemplated by the consent order. So you're saying you were in two phases. The phase one is completely done. Phase two, we're about fifty percent done. So, so that gives us another five years in which to do it. Do you feel that we can complete the consent order projects well within that five years going forward? Absolutely, I think we need them much ahead of schedule. Raj, you want to talk on consent order? Yes, sir. Raj, why don't you just stand up the whole? Yeah, okay. I'll <laughs> keep standing there. And absolutely, our goal is to try and finish and just. I mean, one thing I can, you know, I can say, and I can say with confidence, is that I'm not waiting for DEP or any other regulatory agencies to tell us what is the right thing. And I, and you know, that that timeline uh, does give us a little flexibility in terms of uh, uh, meeting the, uh, you know, meeting the deadlines. But the but the aim is, the goal is to try and finish as quickly as possible, as many projects as possible because our infrastructure is fragile, brittle, and I'm not taking any chances just right. because they said 46. So the sooner I do it, I have a better sense of comfort that I can move on to many of the projects that we still need to do. Okay, great. Thank you. Mayor, can, can we just yes, get a- sir. Yes, sir. Yes, Yeah, thanks. Can we just get an update of the good news of the fines and our progress with the state on leveraging those fines, not as punitive, but as, uh, you know, uh, improvement? Sure. Um, yeah, it was, I believe it was last week. The week seemed to run together, but last week, I think we got official notice from the state that they accepted our stormwater project in the Riverland Preserve um, in exchange for any type of a monetary fine related to the service charges. So uh, working to enhance our environment instead of paying money to the state. 
Thank you. And, and what's that dollar amount, Chris? It's just over a $3 million project. We weren't required to have a whole $3 million, I don't yeah. remember, uh, but just over $3 million. Yeah, $3.2 yeah, million, Commissioner, but we have given them projects for the work. $4.5 million. And the good news is it's a, it's a classic example of logo. We have been able to combine the capital projects, you know, the, the, the flooding problem. So we have combined both the quantity, which is flooding, and quality that is going to improve the, the water quality because we are taking all these uh, water quality measures as a part of our program. Yeah, thank, and that's just, it's great news. I mean, this is, <laughs> working with the state to not be um, just kind of fine, but to be able to take the learning and, and use it to improve our infrastructure is huge. So Raj and Chris and Mayor, great work. Thank you. Uh, lastly, um, COVID, um, uh, you know, uh, as the disease continues to make its way through our community uh, uh, and as the governor continues to uh, issue orders opening, closing um, throughout the course of the year. Um, where do we stand, uh, where do we stand with regard to our response? Uh, first of all, with regard to the uh, participating in the vaccine program, could you explain to the public once more where, what, our, what, our, what role we have in that program? So in the vaccine program, we really play so we've got two different vaccine sites that we play a bit of a different role in each of them, although it's somewhat similar. Um, and we, and we have the Lockhart site where we partnered with Inter-Miami CF to use the stadium that they have a ground lease for. So technically that's our land that they have the, the rights to use. Um, and that relationship that is a tri-party relationship with Broward Health um, and the state through the Department of Emergency Management funnels those vaccines to the Department of to Broward Health uh, for administration at that site. As of yesterday, that site was doing uh, 750 vaccines a day. They anticipate going to 1,000 very quickly. And candidly, when I talked to Alan, um, their COO last week or earlier this week, um, they thought they had the capacity to do 2,000 to 2,500. So um, the more vaccines they can get, the more there's definitely room to do more in that, in that part. At Snyder Park, we opened that up this week, Tuesday. Um, with uh, all but just a couple of folks with tremendous feedback on how much smoother it operated than Holiday Park, much nicer of an environment it was to sit in a line at Snyder Park as opposed to moving back and forth at Holiday Park. Uh, we knew that that site hopefully is going to be up for some time, so we uh, went the distance in, in doing the right type of tents in, the, in July when we're giving vaccines. It's nice outside this morning, but in July it's going to be hot. And right. so. Um, we, uh, we have brought our, our land to that uh, arrangement as well as helping facilitate a little bit of the traffic flow of the site. So we don't have direct vaccinating authority at any of them, um, but we have a commitment to the function of the site and the land itself. Okay, great. Okay, so uh, thank you for the update. Uh, uh, let me just say this to you and to every member of the staff. Uh, uh, you know, 2020 was definitely a challenging year. Uh, we had this workshop and we had all these great expectations of what we we're going to accomplish. Uh, and oddly, despite the, uh, the insurgence of, of the COVID virus and the pandemic in our community, uh, you know, the city staff accomplished a good deal of, of those expectations that we laid out in January. So I want to thank you all for everything that you all did. Um, it shows the, the resilience of this city and the community that we represent uh, working together to get things done. Um, I know there are a lot of uh, hiccups, you know, here and there, but um, uh, but the reality is that here we are today, having moved forward on so many of our infrastructure uh, projects. Uh, and uh, the only thing that I missed out on was the uh, ribbon cutting for the uh, <laughs> for the uh, soccer stadium. But uh, hopefully, we'll see that this year. But but seriously, um, uh, I'm hoping that today we're going to be able to uh, outline all the things that we hope to accomplish in 2021. And uh, and uh, and I think it's going to be a very exciting year for our community. So, so who takes it from here? Mayor. Yes. Mayor. Yes, Vice Mayor. We also missed out on two Bishavad. Don't leave that out. Well, uh, I saw that in the paper today. <laughs> and it's, it's, but the thing is, uh, did we not decide not to have uh, gatherings because of COVID? Correct. 
Okay. Yeah, I was disappointed in seeing that it was uh, that it happened, but yeah. So I'm sorry. Thank you for uh, reminding us all. To be Shabbat is today. <laughs> so I invite the tree today. I invite everyone to plant a tree in their backyard and remain socially distanced so that uh, we can commemorate uh, the event. Uh, uh, but yeah, I know I, it's the first time we missed it. Yes, oh, it is. I just wanted to remind you, but thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Very good. Um, so um, how do we want to do this, uh, Chris? Do we want to go from um, one member of the commission to the next to talk about their goals and priorities? I know we've we've done that approach in the past. For the next half hour, we sort of decided that, that was we'd like to go maybe just uh, district by district and hear the commission talk about challenges and opportunities for what they see as the, in the upcoming year. Yep. And then we'll take a quick break and then we'll start to establish priorities. Okay, very good. All right, Commissioner Moritis, good morning. Morning. How are you all? Good, good. So give us your thoughts. I know you probably, I know you took some time and uh, wrote, wrote quite a bit down. So uh, why don't you share with us what you would like to see in the next coming year? Yes, thank you. And I do want to reflect a little bit on last year. I mean, last year, when we at this time, we the word COVID was not even, you know, a word we had heard of before. So, wow, just how we've all been able to um, pivot and respond to the needs of our community under the leadership of, you know, Chris and, and his entire staff. So thank you. We thought sewer was the main problem. And uh, gosh, we just turned around and then we're, we were hit with COVID. Um, so I guess, you know, I want to also think about one thing we did do, one ribbon cutting that I'm proud of last year. We had the ribbon cutting for the high school football stadium at Lockhart. Um, that was October 29th. And, and that was a great celebration as well. And something we were able to negotiate with Inner Miami when we moved forward with that project, because we knew it was important for Fort Lauderdale High School in Strandhand to have a home field. So that is one um, district one ribbon cutting I, I am proud of and that we were able to open and have the kids play football there. Um, when I think about this year, I just kind of think about how, what priorities should we have or should we add, you know, in this COVID, COVID climate? Um, you talked about, you know, the, our role in the vaccination rollout, you know, that that's a good point. Um, you know, how, what can we do as a city to help our businesses recover? Um, you know, what can we do to help our students who are falling behind, who live in our city? Yesterday, Superintendent Runcy spoke at the Broward League of Cities board meeting, and uh, he identified that, uh, you know, last year, 4% of our population had Fs. This year, 11% of our students, you know, have Fs. So the, the learning is definitely suffering, and they do have a plan to help with the summer program. I know our city is uh, partnering with them as well. So you all may hear a little bit more from Zoe in the future about that. But I do believe as a city, if we have the opportunity to help our residents in all areas, in all ways that we've been affected with COVID and boy, they're multifaceted, you know, I, I would like us just to keep thinking, how can we help with our, our people who are suffering, our businesses, um, you know, financially in, 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 in every way, really. And that's just kind of a question uh, that we can ask and hopefully identify and keep keep as a priority for us, really. Um, you know, one uh, area when I was looking at last year's mass goals, you know, we talked about the uptown area, and I'm, I'm obviously proud of the work that we're doing up there. This year, we are expanding the, the master plan. Chris, I saw that we had $100,000 um, budgeted for the consultant to expand the uptown master plan. When will that person get started. Do we know? Let me uh, turn to uh, Chris Cooper here, who's in the room. And yeah, so I think those funds were just allocated for a budget amendment, and we are... With the adopted budget. Adopted budget, I'm sorry. And then um, we are working on a report for the scope of that project that we're hoping to release soon, and then we can go out and try to get that contract. So we think spring? I think spring. I think the report should be out soon in the next month and then we'll be able to get into the results shortly after that. So yes, April, May. Okay. And Chris, I, I, I um, you're a little soft, but I heard you talk about the scope of the project. So we feel like at this point, 
Um, I mean, I know I've had a few conversations with you all about the scope. I the just want to speaker right up there in the ceiling now. So okay. if you stand right about there, you should be able to be here. <laughs> Sorry, I'm sorry. Right, so we have been working on that scope. I know we've talked to you a little bit about it as we've developed it. So we're finalizing that document now. So that should be out soon. I expect it's in the next month, and then we'll be able to engage the consultant on that project. So, okay. Can right. um and I don't know if this is my role or if this is appropriate. Can can I have one last meeting with you all about the scope of um, is it just the scope of the person who's going to do the work or is it the scope of the master plan in general? It's the scope of the project. Well, you're talking about the Uptown South project, that expansion and connectivity to the Lockhart area and, and yeah. that area close to the east of it. Yes, yeah, we can meet with you on that as well. Okay, so maybe one last meeting before we finalize that. And I know we have had conversations. And as long as you say it goes to, goes to Lockhart and it is a little bit south, that's probably probably the gist of it. But I do think we have some opportunity in this area to think about um, how we can partner with businesses to kind of create um, some new business opportunities in that area. And do we need to, uh, you know, make sure our zoning's flexible, or, or, or what do we do to try to attract businesses to that area? We have a lot of opportunities. I know we also talked last year about the um, the avionics program. And you know the possibility of expanding that. So I would, even though that goes to the community center, Chris, you know, we may want to include some of that if if we so choose in this master plan because that's a really unique piece of property with the airport right there and some of the um, businesses that are currently there. And how can we expand to really be? Um, kind of an incubator up in the uptown area for new businesses. And specifically, uh, I wanna move forward and talk about, we don't have the details yet, but is there something we can add to the community center at Lockhart Park that could be some sort of training program? Um, in addition to the avionics program, we have Atlantic Technical Program, Atlantic Technical School. Can we also build out something where there's an industry uh, jobs of the future, high demand jobs, good paying jobs, specifically maybe career technical around the avionics, aerospace space. And I know we are bringing on a consultant soon to help us kind of evaluate, um, you know, the needs assessment and, and what we could do in that area. So I would like, and, and I hope the commission would support, you know, the opportunity to try to build out something and, and I don't know what that something would be, but just be open to the idea of exploring um, some sort of training opportunity at the community center in addition to, you know, a community center that would service the needs of the residents who want to use that as a park too. I, I just think, I don't know whether it's, you know, um, something in the STEM industry, something in the gaming, droning, coding. I just think uh, we've talked a lot about this with Atlantic Technical too. We, we just have some opportunities there. And I don't want us to miss these opportunities as we're moving forward. So I, I, I want you all just to kind of um, hopefully just have an open mind about it as we move forward, looking at this because we are you know, talking about the Uptown Master Plan, expanding that, what does Uptown look like? And I, I think there's some opportunities also with the community center. So just hold tight. I don't really have answers to that. I just, like I said, I want you to be open to some opportunities as we move forward for our for our youth and our workforce as they um, as we try to help create great jobs in this industry in this city. Really, so, Commissioner. Um, yesterday, I took a tour of a business uh, near our airport. It's a pharmaceutical um, company that's looking to expand and add additional jobs to their uh, current operation, and uh, so. There's a there's a uh, an unknown entity that you know isn't normally on one's radar, but they've been in business there for ten years and uh, and are looking to expand, adding another two dozen jobs to their existing um, uh, payroll. So so there are, so there are a lot of different things that are happening, not just in select industries, but in a, in a whole variety of industries that we. We want to continue to foster, especially since uh, the manufacturing of pharmaceuticals is a clean industry, and uh, 
it certainly provides a lot of uh, technical skills for individuals who work in that industry. Yeah, thank you for, for mentioning that. And I don't know if it's Travidia that you're talking about, but we do have Travidia out there as well. And they're a global company in Uptown. You know, we have Microsoft, we have Citrix, we have global companies in Uptown. So, so whatever we can do and how we can, I just think that whole Uptown area, as we talk about the master plan, I know our previous master plan was a little bit more, you know, the 2000 residential units. I want to, I want to really talk about, you know, business opportunities um, up there and how we can just create this, this, um, it just creates more opportunities. So thank you for that, uh, Mayor. Yes, that pharmaceutical company. And, and like I said, Travidia produces a lot of um, pharmaceutical supplies as well th throughout the world and, and they're up there. Uh, so that's Uptown. I think we have a lot of opportunity there. I know we, we talk about our downtown master plan a lot and there are of course opportunities along Broward, but so I'll keep focusing on that. Obviously this year, I'd like to see um, sometime, <clears throat> hopefully maybe in the next six to eight months, the community center should be, and park should be fully vetted by the community and we should, it should be designed and we should be ready to bring it to you all. Um, so I would say by the end of 2021, this year, one of my goals would be the final design of the community center and the final design of the park and how we move forward with that. So, um, so commission, just so you all know, by, you know, we do have a, um, a comprehensive agreement with Inner Miami and um, part of that comprehensive agreement says that the, the park will be built um, next by next summer. So we kind of have by 2022 next summer, that park will be kind of built. So we really do need to, this is the year that we have to make decisions and start moving forward. So uh, I've been working with AECOM and they're getting ready and staff as well. And so you should, uh, they're gonna do some more community outreach and then we'll bring it back to the commission, I'm assuming, Chris. And then you all will see the final plan to see if you like it, or maybe we bring it to you earlier so you, you get some input. Uh, so all that, you'll see all that probably maybe, I don't know, this year, definitely. So that that's my, probably my number one priority for this year, really. And Chris, do you think that's a realistic timeline, right? Just getting the community center design and plans and everything kind of approved. So we can- Excellent. Move I think that's reasonable, yes. Okay. Uh, so, you're done, Commissioner, consider it done. Thank you. Um, yes, I, I think you're gonna like it. We, we haven't moved as quickly as obviously building the stadium, but I think, um, We've been really uh, just research a, a lot. And, and obviously I've worked with Zoe a lot on this too, and, and just see if there's some more opportunities that we could that we could provide as we are. This is a really kind of historic opportunity. You know, we have 20 acres and we have some money to build a building. So, so what can we do that benefits our entire community? And um, uh, so hopefully we will get your input soon and because uh, I value your input as well. So that's the community center, the park. Uh, you know, the park, the community center, I hope we do things like, you know, recap the history of it. I love to work with historical society still. And when we build that community center, have some sort of, um, you know, um, display. I don't know what their correct word is. Vice mayor would probably correct me. Some kind of <laughs> some type of display about the history of our area. What's the real word I'm looking for? There's gotta be something. Well, some, some some monument or testament to yeah, uh, maybe like a wall that talks about the history of you know the airport a gallery gallery so something and I'd love to get the historical society I've been to um, you know near the FLL the main airport and kind of seeing that the naval air station down there I, I really love I hope we can include some history I think we have a really great opportunity to include that also when we talk about the park I'd like something a little bit more iconic than just a, a park with fields. I'd love to have some kind of orchid garden, butterfly garden, really kind of bring in our gardening community and make this just a beautiful space because I successfully kill every orchid I try to grow in my backyard. I'm going to join the orchid club this year. That's my that's a personal goal. I want to, but I think I would love to have just when we build this park. I want it to be a little bit more iconic. I want it to have history. I want it to have some beauty. I want it to, uh, like I said, have some gardens. What gardens could could we build? You know, you go to Flamingo Gardens or Morikami Gardens and there are beautiful gardens on Miami. What can we bring to Fort Lauderdale so people would actually go there? 
and kind of stroll around and, and, and we have, like I said, we have land and we have opportunity. So, so keep thinking with me. The last thing I'd like to focus on is um, our trail system. I'm super excited that Ben and I are, you know, working on this together. And I, um, once again, I, I want, I don't really want bike lanes. I want trails. I want a trail that I'm not going to get hit by a car when I'm on this trail. Uh, so protected, some trails. There are so many examples of amazing trails throughout our country and state that I know we can we can just find this great um, pathway where this trail will be built. And so I'm excited. We're moving forward with the Path Foundation. So another goal of mine would be by the end of 2021, we just we design or we at least identify and we all agree that this is a good opportunity. Maybe it's not funded. Maybe we don't move forward with all of it this year, but we at least like the possibility and we like the opportunity that they'll bring to us. So I think we're going to see a trail design by the Path Foundation. I think the community center is going to be designed and get ready to be built, but at least be designed. And like I said, I'd like to have those elements with the history and, and, and some kind of gardens and some kind of career technical opportunities. That's all I ask for in this 20 acres. Uh, not a lot. And um, once again, just being very sensitive about what should we do as a city to help our entire city, who all of our people, places, businesses who, who have suffered during, during COVID. You know, what what policies can, can we create? So I think sure. that's what I'm focusing on. So thank you. Commissioner, would you consider adding any more uh, sporting activities to the park area? You mean like a pickleball tournament? <laughs> well, I'm not saying any particular. I'm not going to either. I'm not saying whether it's pickleball. Uh, uh, could be, you know, skateboarding. Uh, you know, it is an Olympic sport. So, you know, we some people have said, you know, can we build a half pipe? It doesn't take, you know, more than a half an acre. Uh it's just stuff like that. I mean, something to to add to these uh, family-friendly sporting opportunities that we already have in the city. Um, I think Holiday Park is kind of tapped out right now. I don't know where else we would put something like that, but just something to consider as we're trying to activate and program the open space. Um, yeah. Twenty acre open space is kind of big. Um, so I'm just thinking if we could add to it, you know, something that we could program. Uh, that would be a very family-friendly kind of enterprise. Just something to think about when you, you know, bring it back to your community. And I, I appreciate that. And obviously, a half acre is is definitely something we can consider. When we did our community outreach for the first year, the the design elements that are currently in this space that you all saw over a year ago would be kickball, two big multi-purpose fields, dog park, walking parks, splash pad. And and some um, and then and then parking in a building. So believe it or not, there's really not that much space. I mean, we could we have some carve outs. Maybe if it's a garden or something interesting, we could do. But after, like I said, we got the community outreach and we did this. Um, there wasn't a lot of space left, and it, it was um, definitely um, functional for multi generations. You know, like grandkids could take their kids, and there were some opportunities if you know, someone was doing something inside, then other family members could be doing something outside. So we wanted to have a food truck area as well. So if you're sitting out there, uh, maybe a place for music on the porch, you know, of the community center. So we will certainly, I, I love your input and feedback as long as it's not all 20 acres, but um, you know, and I know that the skate park you brought up before, and I, I do want to research, I'll, I'll maybe ask uh, Lauren to look into it a little bit more and see if the skate park at Calvary is open to the public because that is right across the street. Um, but I do like a skate park. I, I mean, I've taken my nephews to skate park, so I, and they're not that big. So I do think that's somewhat of a opportunity. It, you know, it, it would be, do we get rid of a kickball field and instead put a skate park in there? You know, we just have to kind of say, what do we give up? I, I really like the dog park because I think, because I, I like my, I'd like to take my two dogs there. And I know a lot of other neighbors would like to as well. So we can um, certainly look at it. And maybe Chris, we can bring back a, a, pre a preliminary design again to the commission, just to show some visuals of exactly what it was we talked about a year and a half ago. 
and see if there's, you know, and in addition with the community, when AECOM reaches out, you know, AECOM could could have those conversations. Would you rather a skate park than a kickball or would you, you know? So let's, um, I'll, I'll ask maybe AECOM can help it, oh, us identify if there's something else or if the commission has identified if there's something else. We really, when I heard from Holiday Park people a lot that they wanted some more passive opportunities as opposed to everything so programmed, you couldn't walk around and enjoy just a little bit of passive park as well you know, with some mature trees or, you know, something, some benches just sitting. So I would try to be a little bit mindful of passive and active and, uh, and then bring in a really great splash pad for the kids too. So maybe we'll bring that back just to give you guys a one last chance. Cause this, this is pretty iconic. Uh, and, and I really want your input. So, so maybe sometime in the spring, we'll get your input as a comms working with the neighbors. Thank you. Uh, Vice mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Good morning, Mayor. Good morning, everyone. Um, before I get into some of the concerns and, and aspirations for District 2, I wanted to echo the Mayor's sentiments about all that has been accomplished this past year and to thank Chris and staff, because I really do think it's a remarkable list um, and something we should all be very proud of in a, in a very challenging year. So again, I just wanted to um, <laughs> echo the Mayor's sentiments along those lines. Um, so moving along, um, looking forward to the parks bond projects. Um, we have identified some new land and have gone under contract and some things in District 2 now. So I'm really looking forward to working with the uh, project manager um, and the Parks, Recreation, Beaches Advisory Board and the specific neighborhoods um, in which these parks are going to go because um, there are so many wonderful ideas from the different neighborhoods where these are happening. So that's definitely um, a priority. Uh, infrastructure will always continue to be a priority, um, especially as it relates to stormwater and flooding issues in the neighborhoods. Um, I think that work must continue and we must alleviate uh, a lot of the flooding issues that folks are experiencing. Um, I'm really anxious to see the Central City rezoning project get back on track that's been stalled for quite a while. Um, and we really need to get moving um, with that. Um, Breakers Avenue, Chris mentioned it's at 30%. I believe we'll be at 60% next month in February. Um, and I want to see that move into high gear. Um, we're going to have to obviously still work on closing a certain funding gap. And there are folks that I've been working with that are working on that. Um, but I want to make sure that once we do get that final design, um, we are prepared to move forward because it is a beautiful project. Um, that's been talked about for decades now. Um, I, I've enjoyed my work with Commissioner Sorensen on the Las Olas Mobility Working Group. Uh, we have one more meeting to go, and then that conceptual plan will be presented to the uh, commission on February 16th. Um, but we need to then plan on where we are going after that conceptual plan. So I want to know what we're thinking about in terms of funding, what we're thinking about in terms of next steps, what we're thinking about in terms of infrastructure that has to be dealt with before we deal with anything above ground. Um, so that's a priority. Um, A1A streetscape project that Chris mentioned uh, also needs to happen. Um, and the aquatic center is moving forward. And I know that we also have uh, an unsolicited proposal in front of us for the east and west buildings. So I'd like to see that peninsula uh, get up and running because the longer it takes, the more we lose out on many, many um, national uh, meets that are uh, uh, in the hopper right now. And I want to make sure that we're able to take advantage of many of these um, that are coming on the calendar. Um, Holiday Park, um, now that the Panthers are going to get moving, that's obviously a priority with War Memorial Auditorium uh, and also the work that's going on with Parker Playhouse. And it gives us great opportunities to make a beautiful entrance um, off of Federal Highway, which I think we definitely need to do. Um, just to really enhance that entranceway. Um, I agree with Commissioner Moritis uh, and also the mayor saying that there's so much going on in that park. We do need to concentrate also on letting people just have some passive areas um, as well. But uh, everything that's happening by that entrance uh, with Parker Playhouse, War Memorial Auditorium and the proposed YMCA right on the street, that is a lot that needs to be coordinated. And we need to figure out exactly what we're doing with the garage uh, proposals that are happening there. So I really wanna see all that happen um, this coming year as well. 
Um, I still hear a lot from different neighborhoods in the district about sidewalk repair, complete streets. So that's something that I'd like to see happen. Um, folks along the aisles in Las Olas, this has uh, come up at my uh, at the Las Olas Mobility Working Group with Commissioner Sorensen, are very anxious to see uh, some sort of EMS station because the response times are not acceptable for that part of the district. Um, and I do know in talking to some development uh, opportunities, some developers, uh, that looks like that might actually be able to happen with some future projects. So I'm very excited about that and, and, and continue to wanna work on something like that as well. Um, we have done some good co code compliance um, processes. Um, we did a real nice sweep in Sailboat Bend last week uh, with about 40 or 50 citations, I believe. Um, I wanna see that kind of code compliance um, sweep happen in a lot of the neighborhoods. I think that we need to continue our beautification work. Chris mentioned the medians, but I think there's so much more that we can do um, in terms of enhancements and beautifications and streetscape um, to really help improve uh, the aesthetics of all of our neighborhoods, not just um, the ones in District 2, but I especially wanna see that happen uh, and continue to happen in the central city neighborhoods as well as Sailboat Bend. Um, my number one complaint that we always get uh, is street lights being out. I don't know why that's so difficult. I, a lot of it is FPL, but um, I cannot tell you how many times we hear from residents about it's dark, the street lights aren't working, what's going on? Um, and they all of course think it's the city's fault. So um, I just think that that's something we have to take a look at. Um, I was also going to mention, so, but uh, Commissioner Moritis already mentioned it, I agree. We need to think of um, post COVID, uh, what are we doing in terms of businesses and um, making sure that um, the assistance is there and um, businesses are back up and running. Um, that's very, very important to our economy. Um, another item, um, this past year, we did do a nice agreement with Bennett Elementary for shared use of the playground. Um, I think that that's something we need to continue to work on with the school board. Uh, so many playgrounds that after school could be used for the neighborhood in which they are. Uh, I think uh, that's important to continue to work on as well. Um, and then our waterways uh, also needs to be a priority. We've all mentioned that before. We've started to work on that, um, but we must do all that we can uh, as the Venice of America to make sure that our waterways are pristine um, and wildlife is fine and the vegetation is fine and people can use the waterways uh, in a safe and secure manner. Um, that's pretty much it for me, Mayor. Okay, one second. I'm still still writing this down. What, Chuba Shabbat? <laughs> How do you spell that? <laughs> T-U-B apostrophe S-H-E-V-A-T. <laughs> Okay. Um, um, okay, we're at 10 o'clock and we're scheduled for a break at this time. Do you want to keep going till we get all the commissioners uh, having said their priorities and then take the break? Does that make sense to everybody? Going. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah. Commissioner Commissioner McKenzie. Commissioner McKenzie, can you hear us? You see on. He's what? Okay. Commissioner is he a, McKenzie, yeah, what? Is he a panelist? I'm on. Okay, great. We can hear you now. Yeah, I was trying. I was trying to get back on. I mean, to cut my camera back on. So I apologize for that. Um, good morning, everybody. Morning. And let me just uh, go off of this. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Yes, we can. Well, I want to say um, last year was a um, challenging year, and I think we did uh, accomplish a lot uh, uh, with the little. And uh, again, I want to um, echo the mayor's comments about staff doing a great job. And it leads me into um, one of my comments. A lot of my stuff will be comments uh, because um, in terms of um, my tenure, how long I've been here, I've been able to accomplish a lot of my district goals. Um, so I will mention some of them um, as we move forward, but most importantly, um, city goals matter uh, the most to me. And I think um, having it coming off this this um, this last year, we need to really focus on what 
we think um, the world and the city is going to look like after COVID. Our business is coming back. Um, um, how do we reopen the city in terms of um, functions, uh, 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 activities? Um, because a lot of folks aren't doing brick and mortar anymore. Um, so I really want staff and, and us as a commission just to pay attention. I think we all are aware of it, but I want it to be part of our, our, our goal setting um, just in, in case, uh, um, you know, we don't get all these things that we're that we're hoping and praying for. We're ready for the aftermath of COVID or the new way of life. Um, secondly, um, um, our water infrastructure. I want to make sure that we uh, keep that moving forward. I'm not so much um, focused on five ads, which I know that's an issue. But these water main breaks that we're continuing to, to experience, um, I just hope we can get ahead of that. And then when we uh, move towards uh, five ash, you know, uh, and we fix that and we turn on the water, um, pipes won't blow out, blow out uh, throughout the city. So I really like to see us go um, hard and fast with the infrastructure for the, um, for the water. Um, continue our, our, our parks bonds. Um, uh, getting these parks that we identified as uh, priorities uh, uh, up and going uh, is a uh, uh, a priority for me as well as you all. Um, I've been working closely with staff uh, on a couple of my major parks, Carter Park in particular, to make sure we keep that um, um, on track. Um, I also agree with all the things that uh, Commissioner Marad has uh, spoke about with uh, with Lockhart. Uh, and moving forward, and anything we can do to you know to help to to expedite that holiday park uh, is another good uh, um, um, example of a lot of work we have to do. I just want to make sure we don't miss the opportunity to uh, to, to uh, make all of our parks better um, for the city of Fort Lauderdale because uh, it helps um, the whole city um, as we uh, continue to improve. Um, the Joint City Hall project uh, to me, um, I want to make sure we stay. You know, um, on track with that, and I'm sure I'm just echoing what all of you are thinking. I'm just putting some ideas out there so that we can, when we do get together uh, at the break, um, we continue on these uh, these projects. I may not be here uh, um, when this happens uh, because having the experience, um, um, mayor, that we have in terms of uh, tenure, um, Sometimes some of your projects won't happen on your watch. You had an opportunity to come back twice and now a third time in a different capacity, but you'll see a lot more than any of us could ever imagine. Uh, but we want to make sure that we keep those things at the forefront and we keep moving forward. Like the swimming hall, for example, I was appointed um, uh, the night that we really approved that project. And here it is um, you know, almost seven years later um, and we we're not ready for a meet yet, but we're, we're getting there. So, Let's just keep these type projects going, and I'm sure we got it in, in the trusted hands of our vice mayor uh, to keep pushing with it. Let's just keep that momentum going. It is important to all and, and more important to the city as, as a whole. Um, you mentioned earlier, Mayor, about Melrose, and I want to make sure when we talk about Melrose, we, we kind of distinguish there's two parts of it, Melrose Park, Melrose Manors. Merrill's Park had a um, uh, issue with the drainage. So now we're improving the current drainage that they had. Merrill's Manor's never had any drains for water to drain at all. Um, this has always been a priority district-wise of mine. Uh, through this um, act of God, um, we were able to move this up, up the uh, pecking order. And now it's a, um, it's a, a priority. And we have been working uh, with staff uh, since uh, we all identified it, and um, I, I communicate with uh, with the uh, public works um, probably every week and the city manager about the progress of it because I think it's important that you have a drain system uh, uh, before we improve other drains. So I thank staff, I thank this commission uh, for identifying that and moving this project forward. Um, another priority of mine that I haven't met yet uh, in my district were the street lights from Merrill's Park. And it's my understanding that we're moving forward with it. Um, we should have that uh, 
I completed sometime this 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 year, and uh, a lot of work, um, a lot of um, um, temperature taken. Uh, good place for us to even get street lights. Some wanted them, some didn't want them. Some wanted the tall ones, some wanted the wide ones, some wanted. You know, everybody had their input, but we have um, reached an agreement, and we're going to start the uh, the, uh, the installation soon. Um, I had some envir environmental challenges in my district. Uh, we resolved the Mickey um, Kenton lawsuit um, uh, for the most part, and I think it, it uh, cleared up a lot of um, misconception of whether or not that contamination was still there. I think as we move forward, there's a couple other hot spots in that area, but as we redevelop or develop those sites, we have to deal with that mitigation at that particular time. Um, and the sites I'm talking about is uh, the um, trash transfer station, as I refer to it as west of DSD on 19th Avenue and Cistron. Um The other site is the old Wingate site on um, 31st Avenue, um, uh, where we capped off back in the Carlton Moore days, but it's still sitting over there like a um, contaminated war zone. There's uh, lights and there's there's fencing and you know there's all these things that make me think that it's uh, it's contaminated, uh, but they did uh, a mitigation back then, and I'm looking to develop that site uh, 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 real soon if we can to rid the myth, the fear that that site is still contaminated. So uh, a development to me uh, would help us further mitigate it and um, get rid of the 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 eyesore. Um, just want to make us aware that redistricting will be happening uh, pretty soon, and we that's when we go in and we rebalance the uh, the uh, population um, and um, boundaries are pushed here and there. And um, I'm looking forward to that and, and see where we go as a commission to uh, to balance uh, the population of, of our city. Um, Chris. Uh, Back before, um, just before the elections, we were going to deal with the um, uh, the other priority I had for my district for annexation of the unincorporated areas, uh, five of them to be to be exact. Uh, that's uh, Roosevelt Gardens, Franklin Park, um, Washington Park, um, Boulevard Gardens, and then there's one that would probably fall in uh, Commissioner Sorensen's. Uh, which is a uh, broad view and um, I know we had a consultant come down we stopped it I think it got a little uh, political I think uh, we were supposed to bring it back in January so uh, I think we could start uh, unveiling uh, what the consultants uh, findings were so that we can discuss it as a commission and uh, move forward with it and mayor as I look at these pockets of, uh, of possible annexation if you look at broad view uh, if we are successful with doing this, there, uh, I know we are going to do an affordable housing project with uh, a Fort Lauderdale Housing Authority. So there's a there's a ballpark there um, that I think is underutilized. Uh, some of us uh, who grew up um, um, off the Brow Corridor, Riverland, Melrose, um, 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 Commissioner Marietta's, uh, we had that that uh, little park that had the big um, um, it's like an indentation back there. I mean, it's a lot of ballpark space. Um, it uh, needs some improvement. And if, if we incorporate these these pockets, uh, there's an opportunity for additional sports. I think skateboard, pickleball, and an array of things. But I don't know how fast we can get there. But as we know, um, um, it's not anything expedient when you get deal with these bonds. We all have been talking about bonds for parks since you guys got here, uh, and now you're on your second terms. So it could be on the drawing board uh, as something uh, uh, for the future that won't step on any toes of anybody else's park or plan space for, for their park. So if you get an opportunity to take a look at it, it's just um, west of Davie Boulevard um, and 441, uh, second block to the left, uh, a beautiful little uh, uh, um, gym, I think, that it needs to be um looked at and maybe cultivated 
uh, and could be that park space that we're looking for. Um, let's go through my list here and make sure I've hit all the things I've wanted to hit here. And I think that I, I have in the last but not least, um, what I really like for us to, to continue to do is look at the homeless situation, um, but go a step further this time. And this is what we can do um, with the county to deal with what we have uh, uh, remaining um, at the Brown County Library and, and uh, figure out a real fix. And we can't do it alone, Mayor. Uh, we've, we've talked about this time and time again. Uh, we've got Commissioner Sorensen um, sit on various uh, committees to try to uh, tackle this. Uh, the mayor has done it. Um, I think we all have lifted up and rolled, rolled up our sleeves to try to figure this out. Um, this is going to be a joint effort if we ever want to deal with uh, the homeless or this segment of the homeless uh, uh, to find a solution um, to uh, find permanent housing uh, uh, for them. I mean, we have all the other monies that we expend with uh, United Way, with the HAC, and uh, Broward County uh, services, our own in-house uh, that we do through neighborhood support with our rapid rehousing. I would just love to see us um, um, tackle this uh, in, in, uh, in the next four years uh, before um, I leave this commission and, and really, really, really uh, put a dent in. But it would not happen. It would, it would not happen without the county um, um, really taking it seriously uh, so we can, um, we can fix this problem. With that, I, I just gave you a synopsis of what um, I would like to see, and I look forward to the, the remaining um, uh, uh, workshop we're gonna have this morning. Uh, and I also like uh, this uh, setting that we have. I think this is uh, more personable. I think we're able to accomplish a lot more. Uh, we're not sitting over there with a um, uh, consultant that we, uh, we hired and we all did one-on-one -on -one interviews. He comes back and repeats what you say, and, then you really can't uh, tangibly uh, see the results. I think uh, what we have done as a commission uh, doing it this way is much more impactful and um, I'm, I'm so excited to be a part of it. Thank you. Okay, great, thank you. A lot of good stuff. Um, uh, District 4, Commissioner Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor, appreciate it. Um, jump right in, so all good, good thoughts. Um, Hits, hits some of the highlights for me. Infrastructure, stormwater, sewer, water, um, great work during this past year. Raj and team, Chris and team continued to, uh, this is a long-term investment that has to be, I think, a top priority uh, in perpetuity. Uh, resiliency, uh, when we think about sea level rise, climate change, critical that we continue uh, doing as much as possible to address this. And so that, that means um, our continued work on seawalls, our, our seawalls in downtown are, are, are challenged. Our, we need to invest money in our downtown seawalls right along the, the banks of the New River. So that, that's an important um, priority for me as we look at resiliency and continue to address this. Water quality, third one. Um, water quality testing, again, phenomenal work. Uh, in partnering with the water keepers, continuing to grow and expand that. I was just named mayor to the Broward County Water Advisory Board. Oh, yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. So it's um, um, the Broward League of Cities um, and, and, and President Tracy Kalari. So I'm, I'm excited about that. This is a big, important um, priority for me. So uh, continue to expand that and being innovative. No reason Fort Lauderdale cannot be the most innovative city in the world around waterway quality improvement testing and so forth. So excited about that. Fourth, homelessness and, and housing. Uh, uh, Commissioner McKenzie, I think, nailed it. And, and, and we are working day in and day out with county and our staff has been working really closely with them. And I just had a COC board meeting yesterday. So we got some really good ideas and plans that are already rolling forward. Uh, Greg Chevaria, our assistant city manager is doing a great job helping lead that effort. So um, we, we got some good stuff coming uh, forward to the commission that I think is gonna be very positive in that. Um, 
We got uh, affordable and workforce housing. This is vital to our city. When we talk about businesses, when we talk about helping businesses, when we talk about education, which are both so important, we've got to have housing for these folks that so that employers can attract employees, they can live uh, with, with, with living wages uh, affordably in, in the city of Fort Lauderdale. So that's really important to me. I think uh, continues need to be important. And, and one update there, Mayor, just want to get share with you and, and, and the commission is we continue, Senator Rich, myself, uh, Rebecca McGuire, the county continue to have very good outreach to other municipalities to ask and encourage engagement in homelessness, supporting not only financially, but from a service and law enforcement standpoint. So we're engaging Davey. We've got great support with their law enforcement. We're working on their town leaders. Plantation, uh, great engagement with law enforcement, working on the town leaders. Pembroke Pines working on Miramar, Lauder Hill, Lauderdale Lakes, Hollywood and Pompano. Um, so we're all, we're fully engaged with the county, with those municipalities to, uh, to engage in support around homelessness. And, and uh, I'll keep you all updated as we get more to that. Transportation and traffic, um, you know, uh, serving on, on with uh, Vice Mayor on Los Olas Mobility, very excited about where we're heading for that, um, the progress we're making there, and, and, and the next big question is going to be funding. So we, I, I want to, you know, that's going to be a, a big dollar amount, and so we've got to be very creative and, and innovative around that. Uh, with uh, Commissioner Moritis, Lauder Trail, it's exciting. I think this is going to be uh, the future of where we're going as a city in terms of mobility under this transportation uh, component. The tunnel mayor, I think you've been doing a phenomenal job advocating for the tunnel, exploring that possibility uh, to go under the new river. And uh, I think there's real opportunity there, especially when we think about Coastal Link and Brightline and, and moving folks around our region to further spur economic development. Again, it's a business economic driver by having good transportation and the, the ease of, of moving around. Um, uh, two last things, smart growth. Um, we can, I think we've done a really good job. We're, we're choosing the right projects, I think. We're holding developers accountable to invest in our infrastructure. We're saying, no, you have to invest in sewer, stormwater. So I just think collectively, each of us is I just, I'm really proud of that work and saying no to bad projects. And, and kudos to Alan uh, and the whole legal team for standing up for the city and standing up for neighbors and saying, we're not gonna be bullied around. We're gonna say no to bad projects and the courts have supported us in that. And I'm just, I'm proud of that. And then the last piece, I, I kind of put it as this bucket of equality, fairness, and justice. This is something, you know, it falls along the lines of kind of to create a more perfect union. And it, it's, it's something we should always be striving for. I think we've made good strides in that and we have to continue to strive towards that um, as, as a city commission, as a city, um, with our hiring processes, how we treat others, our ordinance and so forth, um, and how we respond and respect to each other. And, and the last piece is I'm just so proud of the city. I'm proud of Chris and the city staff have done an amazing job. Department heads and their department leaderships, none of this would be possible without the amazing work we have. And it's just day in, day out from uh, everyone that's on the streets to in offices, wherever they may be working on this. I'm, I'm very proud of that. And lastly, I'm just proud of us as a commission, how we work together, how we share ideas, different perspectives, and we strive to come together uh, because I know we each have in, in our hearts the best of intentions to, to serve the people of Fort Lauderdale. Thank you, Mayor. Great, thank you so much, Commissioner. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> um, it certainly uh, gives us a lot to think about over the next year. Um, Hope you said goodbye to your wife, uh, Chris, because you're not going to see her next year. <laughs> Send her a postcard now. And now. Um, so um, everything that's been discussed this morning uh, are all great goals and initiatives. Uh, I know that city staff will try to distill those into uh, some, some patterns and some columns that uh, uh, we can then pursue. Uh, I just want to add a couple of things. Um, maybe repeat my emphasis. Um, as you all know, in the past, um, whenever we took neighborhood surveys, uh, the number one problem that everyone complains about is traffic. And um, 
And, you know, there are, there are a lot of Band-Aid solutions to that, but then there are more holistic solutions. And I think this commission is committed to the holistic uh, solutions. And, uh, and that's the only way we're ever going to be able to tackle the issue of, of traffic. Um, this past year, we, were, we, were, um, we saw what COVID-19 had done to uh, lighten up the vehicular traffic on our roadways. But as the pandemic hopefully subsides in the months ahead and our businesses are able to get back on their feet and people going back to school and, um, and our communities returning to a sense of normalcy, uh, we're, going to be, we're going to be faced again with, uh, with vehicular traffic as well as, uh, um, uh, as, as, well as um, all the other issues that come with uh, people trying to get from point A to point B. So um, I think we should hope to see a, re a, re a return of the scooter program here in Fort Lauderdale during this year. Uh, but more importantly, um, you know, I've always identified traffic in Fort Lauderdale from two sources. One is localized traffic and second is commuter traffic from the suburbs. And, um, uh, and so we may have more of, a, of an input on what commuter traffic, uh, excuse me, what localized traffic looks like. We don't have much of an input what commuter traffic will look like. That becomes a county uh, issue. And uh, certainly it's, an, it's a subject matter that can be brought up at League of City meetings. But right now, I think in trying to deal with localized traffic, um, uh, we need to think more in terms of trying to uh, build an urban core, one that has uh, diverse opportunities for people to live here, to be able to work here, to be able to go to a grocery store and, and not get out of their cars. Uh, uh, it's really important that uh, that vehicular traffic be reduced to a minimum in our, in our city. Uh, I mean, obviously, if someone lives in the Coral Ridge area, they're going to need to take a, a car to go to Fresh Market or to Publix. Um, but, for, but within the downtown area, uh, we're doing our best to try to pull in uh, people who uh, who are prepared and are willing to um, bring their companies into the downtown so that say we have a grocery store on Andrews Avenue in Flagman Village, another one on Third Avenue in Flagman Village. Um, you know, a lot of developers, when they propose their buildings, they always say, oh, we got first floor retail and they give you 8,000 square feet. And, you know, that's nothing. We need to be more aggressive in our asks when it comes to developers, when they come to our community, we need more than just bars and restaurants. We need some of the fundamentals and the and the rudiment uh, aspects of, uh, of going about our day to day lives. And uh, going forward, I'm hoping as a commission, we can expect to make those um, asks um, when a project comes to us. I would certainly um, um, recommend and uh, and and ask our own city staff that when developers come to our city, that this become a priority for them as well. You know, where are we going to, where are we going to house some of these amenities so that we have a walkable living downtown rather than everyone getting in and out of their cars to get somewhere. That's a thing of the past and we need to uh, see whatever we can do to try to minimize the use of vehicles in our downtown area. This is especially true since in the downtown area, we've eliminated the parking requirement for new, new construction. There's, so there's, there's no connect, there's no, uh, uh, the, two, the two concepts don't uh, work hand in hand. You can't say we're, we're not going to, we're not going to require any, uh, have any parking requirement downtown and yet require every single aspect of your life to be uh, accomplished by getting into your car or going somewhere. So we really need to uh, rethink what we're doing in our downtown. We need to uh, redesign our, our building concepts and our development ideas. Uh, Commissioner Sorensen talked about smart growth. It's all part of what smart growth should be about. And I think that 2021 should be a, uh, an important year in trying to redirect our thoughts and our philosophies going forward. Um, along with the idea of transportation, again, Commissioner Sorensen brought up um, the, the uh, uh, what's going to happen on the railroad tracks. Um, as we all know, that there's there's a move, uh, push a push really to bring a coastal link uh, commuter trail uh, between uh, uh, Miami Dade and West Palm Beach. You know, 
we've been talking about this for decades. Uh, when I was first a commissioner, as uh, Commissioner McKenzie said, you know, you, I was a commissioner back then, we were talking about a commuter railing. Here we are 15, 18 years later, and we're still talking about it. So, uh, but maybe now we can do something about it. Maybe now something as real is going to happen. We know that the Bright Line FEC railroad folks are very much on board to make this happen. And we also know that it has unintended consequences. Um, you know, the, the lowering of the bridge over the New River, the frustration of traffic going east-west on Broward, Sunrise, and, and other uh, east-west arteries in our city. Um, it was a real challenge for us to think about how we we're going to address that. I'm really, really happy that um, the 21st century has uh, made its way into Fort Lauderdale, and now we see there are opportunities to perhaps build a tunnel instead of a bridge. Uh, through our through our, our central core to avoid all those traffic tie-ups, not only on the river, but also on the roads. Um, uh, this is an important project. I hope the, the commission will continue to support this opportunity that we have, especially since we're now finding out that the cost for this may be significantly less than uh, uh, what, we were, what was first proposed. Now, keep in mind, there are going to be interests out there that, uh, you know, who people who build bridges or or um, uh, who have other ideas about how we should deal with uh, uh, deal with the, the commuter rail but I hope that we can all focus and, and agree that that let's first explore what this tunnel concept could be for us uh, how it would open up neighborhoods how it would create green space how it would end the divide that comes right down the middle of our city and separating people separating communities separating cultures um, uh, and we've had enough of that it's time to put that behind us and look forward to see what we can do in the future um, so we will continue to pursue that and uh, and we'll continue to report back to the commission as i find out information uh, so that we can all work collectively on this uh, undertaking uh, it was touched upon about the government center that effort continues to move forward uh, I think one of, has another uh, joint we meeting. Have some date yet, but I talked to uh, Mr. Cohen last night. Um, we've got some movement forward that uh, in our pursuit at this point, there's going to be a meeting with KPMG next Tuesday that we'll participate in. Um, but the UDK has not had a new date set yet, but it'll come after we talk to KPMG next Tuesday. Okay, KPMG is who? That's who's doing the, the finance component of the kind of the free partner for us. That, uh, we both have agreed to hire to uh, to lead the finance aspect. Right. So there are consultants. Correct. Right. So uh, so that that seems to be moving forward. Uh, I know the county is eager to uh, get this done. Uh, the site is still remains there, uh, and uh, uh, which is the bus station. Uh, and again, that will free up other real estate in our downtown. So there are other exciting opportunities that are starting to materialize. Um, I had a meeting this past week with uh, uh, County Commissioner Dale Holness, who is bringing to Fort Lauderdale an opportunity. Uh, there's an organization called the World Trade Center. Uh, no affiliation with the World Trade Center in New York, but uh, they've had World Trade Center buildings built in other parts of the world, uh, including South America. They want to build a, uh, a World Trade Center in our downtown. Uh, they're looking at a, like a 30, 40 story building which would house uh, trading partners from around the world uh, to focus on uh, opportunities for trade with uh, domestic businesses. And uh, this is a great opportunity for the city of Fort Lauderdale. They've skipped other communities to the south and uh, have no interest in communities to the north. So uh, we'll continue to work with these folks and to see how we'll be able to um, you know, find a place for such a building, but but their architectural designs are amazing that they've done in other countries, especially Brazil. And uh, um, so it would be a really exciting component to adding jobs, and adding opportunities, and uh, continuing to make Fort Lauderdale stand out amongst the rest of the world. Uh, federal Courthouse, uh, we now have a site for the Federal Courthouse. It's um, on third, Southeast 3rd Avenue in 11th Street. Uh, a, deal, a deal has been made with the landowner and the federal government, so they're moving forward on that. So uh, that would be the new location for a Federal Courthouse. I think there'll be some uh, charrette, neighborhood charrettes to, to discuss design and, and site plan. So uh, 
Um, we're looking forward to that. Not sure what kind of design the federal government has in mind. They, they say it's going to be a classical design. Uh, Vice Mayor, do you know what classical design means? Are we going to have a Parthenon on 11th Street? I know. It sounds like that way to me. I don't know. That's exactly what that. That's exactly <laughs> well, what that is. Let, if Nashville can happens. have one, we can have one. I so, think we uh, should go for an international design. Well, international, yeah. Well, that's that's a much more uh, 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 has less ornamentation. I know yes. that. Yes. Um, but but just everyone should keep in mind that it, you know I I since I became mayor I became like an ex officio member of the federal courthouse uh, panel and uh, 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 the federal government does not want its existing building torn down so this will be a, an opportunity for us to try to work with developers to see what we can do to reprogram uh, that building and make it an important. Uh, uh, focal point of our of our emerging downtown. It has a unique brutalist design, uh, coupled with some classical elements. And um, uh, you know, I, I'd be ashamed if you know we didn't we didn't seize this opportunity and do the right thing on that site. Mayor, I agree with you, Mayor. Excellent. I, I agree not with you what, so much. What's that, Ben? Mayor, that's actually not what GSA is telling me. Oh, what do they say now? Tell tell me. <laughs> Yeah, the, the latest they're telling me is that so there's, you know, the opportunity for some form of um, putting that as, as supply as um, excess property. And then there's a process for which various entities um, are sequentially kind of listed in terms of preference for seeking that that property. Um, we would be near the top of the list, but um, they're, they're kind of looking further at that. They they're comfortable for whatever we would like to use it for, including tearing it down and, and doing some uh, higher, better use of it. So um, we're kind of there. They seem to be agnostic at this point about it um, around kind of what we would like to do with it. Mayor, didn't, didn't John Herbst once tell us something about uh, a policy with regards to that building or federal building and demolition where he said that would have to go through a whole process. Because I agree with you, Mayor, I, I think it would be a shame to see that building demolished. And I did circulate a while ago from Tropic Magazine, a charrette that they did with some terrific suggestions of how that could be utilized. That really is in so many ways, our, our public corner where people come to express themselves and on just about every topic, it, it really has been a mainstay of public discourse, that corner. Um, and the possibilities are endless of what that building could be. Um, I think it, I think we do need to prioritize working with developers and maybe even getting them somehow working with that land just to the west that's vacant. It could be included in that parcel and something really spectacular could happen. But um, I actually posted some uh, ideas about it on Facebook uh, last week or the week before, I can't remember. But... Um, there are great, great designs that are out there, and I, I think that we should do all we can as a city to maintain that building. It's a um, Florida architect. It's, it, it, it really would be absolutely heartbreaking to see that building demolished. Thank you. Right. You are correct, Vice Mayor. The, the, um, the guidelines under which GSA operates have to give consideration first to the historic value of the property in terms of any disposition that they look at. So while they may be somewhat agnostic to, to how it's disposed, they are required under, um, under federal law to give consideration to the historic aspects of the building as they go through that. Well, that's good. No, I, I, I did remember you mentioning that somewhere along, along, along the line. Maybe we should designate it historic. So, um, yeah, so, so I'm, I'm going to follow up on what um, I'm going to follow up on what Ben has said because that was not my understanding. And I, I um, so I'll, I'll if I stand corrected, Ben, you know, I appreciate you bringing that up. But um, let's see what exactly is the protocol for that building uh, going forward. Now that they've found a new site, now that they're moving forward with the uh, with the construction, um, it probably won't happen for another for God four or five years. So. Um, uh, but <laughs> so since we have additional opportunities to be reelected, 
uh, hopefully we'll be here when we can do the ribbon cutting on that building. Um, but as commission, as the vice mayor said, it would be a shame if we did not seize this opportunity to try to repurpose that building and, and keep it as a as a focus, a focal point of our downtown. Uh, it really is a, a unique design. Um, yeah, just to be clear, though, the to John's comment, the historical quality or nature is a criteria for which properties are evaluated. That that doesn't mean every property is determined to have historical value and so forth. So um, that that's one of several qualities that they uh, evaluate there. Okay. All right. Maybe. Right. But I, I, Mayor, I, I think that we can make a really good case for the historical value of that property. I'm sure that um, you know our HPB and Trish Logan and others could. I, I, so much has already been written. Um, actually, it was about two years ago when there was actually a whole symposium on that building and people came from all over the state uh, to tour it and discuss it. Um, it was already been listed on the Florida Trust for Historic Preservation's endangered list a couple of years ago. So um, there's more than enough evidence and more than enough information to make a really good case for the historic value of that building. Okay, so we'll continue to monitor the uh, progress there and I'll let you know as I know things. Um, several of you brought up uh, homelessness, and um, and uh, unfortunately, that that becomes a, a refrain every time we have uh, one of these sessions. Um, one of the things that uh, we need to focus more on, and I'm going to try to make an effort. I just haven't gotten around to it yet, but uh, I want to try to make an effort to uh, communicate with the sheriff's office to discuss discharge proceedings from the county jail. Um, it's, uh, it's unfortunate that when folks leave the jail, have no place to go, didn't really originate in Fort Lauderdale, but now find themselves in Fort Lauderdale. Um, and that's just one thing. Uh, I know that the uh, COC has a discharge uh, subcommittee, but we never seem to get anywhere with that. And uh, um, we just need to, we just need to be more aggressive in our, in our efforts to, uh, um, to ensure that folks that leave the jail do not find themselves on the street. Nonetheless, we still have a lot of other encampments that are starting to develop around the city. I noticed one in front of the Target on Federal Highway. Uh, the one by the library is, is it continues to uh, to it continues to be uh, a site for homeless people to congregate. Um, there's just places all around the city. And now we're being sued by some enterprising attorneys who seem to think that panhandling is the best way out of homelessness. So they're suing the city to allow for uh, panhandling because they feel that that's, uh, that's a way for people to sustain themselves while they're homeless. Um, I really think it's a shame that resources are being spent in that regard because if we're able to use those same resources to really help people out of homelessness and get them back on their feet, we would be much more um, we'd be much more uh, productive. Um, but we'll have to deal with it. Um, you have any thoughts on that, uh, Alan? Um, you no, know, I agree. Um, I mean, we we're going to defend it fiercely. Um, you know, other cities have been targeted. Providence Beach is one of them. That's right. Uh, they've been threatening to do that for several years and fought back. Some components of it have already been litigated in other jurisdictions successfully. Um, but we'll have to see without. Hey, Alan, can you speak up? Yeah, without actually putting our cards on the table, I don't want to get too much into our defense at this point since we just got served yesterday. Um, but we uh, we will be fighting it. Okay. Um, so, you know, I don't, I, I hear rumors that some businesses are planning to move out of the city, having given the county and the city, a, you know, a chance to try to eliminate homelessness downtown. Um, uh, I hate to hear that. I, I, so, you know, we are, we have failed in that regard. There's no doubt about it. Despite all of our best efforts, um, lack of resources, lack of commitment, lack of cooperation. Um, and uh, in the meantime, uh, these folks are victims of, of our inability to, to try to eradicate the, the, the problem. Um, you know, I was part of a uh, business council that made an effort three years ago to 
to uh, try to eliminate homelessness in our in our downtown. Uh, it just seems all they want is money from the city. We, we gave them a lot of money. It turns out that the that their ability to uh, to use that money in a, in a, in a you know, cost effective way didn't really materialize. I think sitting at this seat, where we had a, uh, a conference table, conference room, uh, excuse me, a conference meeting. Um, uh, we were told that 25 people were uh, were processed through that program with our one million dollars, which is totally unacceptable. And uh, uh, even the community court hearing Chris tell us that we processed 25 people successfully, even that I know that that's probably part part due to the fact that the court wasn't even in session most of the year because of COVID. But you know we should be doing 25 a month, not 25 a year. So, um, so we have to be a little bit more proactive in that regard. Uh, if housing, if the availability of housing is an issue, we need to deal with that. If availability of, of funding is an issue, we need to deal with that. Um, the state continues to give us a grant to, to keep the, the, uh, the, uh, the community court going forward. Uh, we work with uh, our work with uh, Representative Chip Lamarca has been very helpful in that regard. Um, so, uh, so, those, so those things are really, really important to keeping the quality of life in our downtown and throughout our city, uh, up, you know, uh, at a standard to which our community expects us to keep them. So, uh, homelessness will continue to eat away at uh, at that quality of life, not just for the homeless people, but for the people that live in our neighborhoods. Um, Commissioner Sorensen focused a lot on water issues um, from all perspectives. Um, there's no doubt in my mind, and I think we've talked about this again and again, how water is the, is, is the virtual lifeblood of our city. Um, we are the Venice of America. We need to continue to work on water quality uh, in our waterways. And I, and I think we are already on track to doing that. I wanna thank uh, our, um, our uh, city staff for their aggressive stance on cleaning up and dredging the bottom of certain waterways uh, that were affected by the uh, sewage uh, breaks. But more importantly, going forward, the, the continuous testing and applying our resources to try to clean up those waterways will always be an ongoing process, but, but at least we're doing it. And, uh, and it's something we hadn't been doing as aggressively in the past as we should have been. Um, continuing with our infrastructure, of course, is, uh, is important. And now, now that we're seeing the, uh, the completion of our, of our uh, seven and a half mile force main sewer line project, um, we now need to focus on our water treatment plant. Uh, we've, we've received a uh, non-solicited proposal, uh, which we all need to examine. And at some point, I think, uh, Chris, you'll have to give us an opportunity to review what that means to the city. But we really need to move forward on that. Um, uh, rising sea levels will continue to uh, penetrate our aqu aquifers, and, and the water color, water quality, uh, uh, is all about sustainability as a community. And we need to, we really need to move forward aggressively on that. Um, and uh, I think that's enough. <laughs> uh, I think that will certainly. I think that rounds out everything that we've talked about today. Did anyone want to add anything else that they think they left out on the commission? Vice Mayor sent me one other about the Hibbershie Entertainment District, so I've added it to my working list of notes, and now uh, Eric has captured that. Okay. Okay, very good. Um, so uh, why don't we take a break? Uh, yeah, so what we'll do for years, if we can take about a 10 minute break, we'll work together and we'll still what we just heard into different categories. We'll come back after 10 minutes and we'll talk about what the priorities of the commission were and affirm whether or not they continue. We add to them or we take away from them and modify them. And that'll be the that'll be what happens in the next hour after we come back. Very good. So give us 10 minutes. It's uh, 1046, so 1056 ish. Well, we'll give you this to, we'll call give it till 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock, we'll be back with a, a distilled list of everything we just heard. Okay, very good. Thank you.
Hey there, we're uh, we're back from from the break. We took that one time to do some good uh, working of trying to um, come up with themes of where we think the the commission, based upon the discussion that we had, uh, at least a place to start from. So we'd like to present what we think we heard, and then get the commission's reaction, and uh, and and see how close we got it, how close we didn't get it, and we'll go from there. And then uh, the balance of our morning together will be to talk about uh, the nonprofit funding. So. Um, with this, I'll hand it to Erica now, who uh, she and Ingrid will talk a little bit about how uh, what we put together over the break. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, so after, based on this morning's discussion, um, we went ahead and we put together a list including the priorities from 2020, as well as some of the new topics that we heard for 2021 and put them in a list. So it's organized in top priorities and priorities. Um, this is inclusive of, as I said, uh, last year and then the new themes we heard this year. Uh, based on the consensus and some of the discussions we've heard, we've taken the liberty and already organized them perhaps as top priorities and bottom priorities. Um, but we wanna hear your reaction, your themes. If we need to reshuffle, we can do so. If we miss something or you think we've you know, moved forward enough that you'd like to remove it from the list altogether, um, we're flexible to do so. Um, but for the top priorities, those of most significance for 2021, we heard homelessness and housing opportunities, again, stay, to stay on the list. Um, same with infrastructure, transportation and traffic, waterway quality, and then the new one that we saw and heard from you this morning was the discussion around parks and public places, including how we implement the parks fund and then um, leverage some other opportunities with our public places. Um, resiliency would be an area that we heard still has importance, but perhaps moved to an area of priority, still important, uh, but does not rise to the level of top priority. Um, and then one that we, we didn't hear any discussion on this morning, we know it was an accomplishment, was the implementation of the uh, comprehensive plan in downtown master. Well, that's, that's pretty much complete, is it yeah. not? Yeah, we would, so we, the term we use for that is management and progress. Yeah, so that would be a management We continue to manage it, but it just doesn't I think we're still, list. I think we're still waiting to hear back from uh, city staff on the, uh, there were a couple of outstanding issues, one of which was parking, parking requirement for new construction. <clears throat> and I know staff was working on that, was gonna get back to us hopefully sooner than later so that we can implement the, that policy going forward. And uh, so anyway, there were a couple of issues that still remain out there. So that would be a management in progress, okay. Um, and then looking just um, at the priorities list, um, streetscape and tree enhancements uh, was an area that we heard from you last year was of importance. We have quite a few initiatives in progress. So this is one that you potentially would recommend moving to management in progress. Right. Um, same with the airport workforce training facility, or as I believe we're more commonly referring to it, the aviation and aerospace training program. I, I don't think that's a management in progress. I think the commission still needs to make some decisions on that. Chris, you, do, am I am I wrong on that? I mean, we have a lot of decisions to make. Well, I think you're, you know, I, I I think you're right. I think there's still decisions to be made there. When we say move to management in progress, that doesn't mean it falls off of our to do list. Um, it's just one of those things that we wouldn't necessarily report on monthly um, to the commission. So, but again, this is our first pass at this. If, uh, if you want to keep it on. I think, I think the first step is the commission needs to decide what we want to do because part of that training facility could have um, multiple facilities. The commission needs to decide what we want to do at the community center. So I, I think the airport workforce training opportunities, really. It's not just one facility at this point. It's kind of, what do we want to do? Maybe after we do a needs assessment of the facilities we have. Um, so I, I think the commission needs to weigh in. I don't think they, uh, after, especially after we, that consultant gives us a report and the commission can see, do we want to use some of our current facilities for these opportunities? It, it, so I, I think it's, I just think it's a little bit more at a commission level at this point, and then we can we can push it up, you know, give it back to you all. Um, so then looking at the rest of the list, uh, safety and smart growth uh, were again two areas that we heard in your discussion this morning. Um, they were on our list last year. Uh, there's some talk this morning about street lights. We've included that last year and we'll continue to look at that as a component of safety uh, moving forward. Um, 
Resiliency, again, we heard that as a discussion. We want to leave that on the list, um, but we have quite a few initiatives underway, so potentially moving this to the list of priority. Um, and then post-COVID assistance was uh, one last common thread that we heard in all of your discussions this morning. So this is what we've taken to summarize, but we can reshuffle, we can discuss. If we left something off, please let us know. We want to make sure that we get everything um, included where appropriate. So maybe it would be helpful to go back to the top priorities and now it just say, okay, let's hear from the commission on those five, which are homeless and housing, infrastructure, transportation and traffic, waterway quality, and parks and public spaces, and just get some first reactions to those. Well, I think almost every I think almost everyone agreed. I mean, I took notes too, and almost everyone uh, recited those five priorities in one fashion or another. Um, is there anyone, in, does anyone have a uh, difference of opinion with whether or not uh, uh, these should continue to be priorities going forward? Ben, I'm, I think this is great. I'm, I'm good with this. Uh, resiliency is the only thing that's um, sticking out a little bit for me in terms of moving it down to, to a, a lower level priority. Um, but uh, so I, I'd kind of prefer it in the top priority, but I'm, but I'm flexible uh, on that. Let's go down to the priorities then. I'm just trying to balance these out. We have five and six. We could so, go, Mayor. We could go six and five. That would be fine. Mayor. Okay. Yes, sir. Was that your statement or your question? I mean, no, no, I'm just, I just made a statement. No, we're going to ask everyone. We're going to go around again. No, no, because the reason why I ask because t to me, it just sounds like this is what we talked about last year. In the year before, and you're saying, do we want these to be the priorities, or is this something we want to make sure that keeps it keeps moving forward with follow up? So we'll ask everyone. Uh, we'll go around and ask everyone what they're th to respond to that exact point. Because I'm so, just trying to understand what you said. I, I, that's the way I took it. So am I correct for assuming that? No. Well, so, I was just making a comment that I think you know. When everyone made their presentation this morning, I think uh, all of us seem to have hit one or more of these uh, uh, commission top priorities. Okay. Uh, their statement. I was just making a, an observation. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm good. That was all. So, okay. but, but, and the reason why I said that is because I think I think that's a good thing because yeah, we all, we all are. There's a consensus here on uh, what our top priorities are. So, so that's a good thing. Um, yeah. Whether or not we get them done this year is another thing, but at least we're all uh, there's a consensus as to what's important to our community, mm -hmm. and uh, and I think it's identified in these lists. But but okay, so Commissioner Moritis, you you started to discuss uh, your uh, response to this. Uh, yes, you have any comments? Um, I'm just thinking in my mind where certain things would fall. Like I do think it's really unique and innovative that you brought back this. You know, Elon Musk tunnel thing, would that fall under transportation? I just want to make sure the thing that we're really focusing on are on the list. Yeah, but that I would be under transportation, yes. Okay, I just, got, I guess maybe in my mind, it helps to have a few more bullets. And I'm thinking resiliency, like infrastructure, is stormwater under resiliency or stormwater under infrastructure? Because that's really big. And I think, you know, obviously water sewer infrastructure and five ash are big too, but when we talk about stormwater, through that uh, when we were at, so we would probably put that in infrastructure. Um, but once we, yeah, okay. you know, once we decide what the, you know, once we, after this morning, um, we will come back and we will put together the different examples of what we think fit in each of these buckets based upon what you talked about. So this morning, we're just trying to get the buckets right. Okay, got it, got and it. we're gonna come back to you with the specifics right. in each one. Okay, so I just wanna make sure I'm thinking the right, thoughts and that they're categorized in the right way. Um, I, you know, love, I spent a lot of time on the comprehensive plan, the downtown master plan, and, you know, it's not my district, but obviously it's important to our entire city. I really like that all five of us thought about that. I really think um, you all may want to pay a little bit more attention to uptown because there's a ton of opportunity there. I know it is in district one, but when we talk about the uptown master plan, I think if we could all engage in it a little bit, I think we would have really create some new opportunities for businesses and just a, a new whole district. I feel like we spent a lot of time on downtown, which I'm happy to do because it's important, but 
Um, I don't know if everyone has spent as much time in the uptown area, especially with that investment of, you know, lock um, enter Miami. I just, I think there are a lot of, there's a lot of opportunity there. And I know I'm advocating on behalf of my district, but I'm really advocating on behalf of our city. I think if we would make it a little bit more of a priority, I, I think you'd be surprised about, you know, what the outcome would be over the next couple of years. Just my plug. <laughs> well, I think, uh, so watch what you wish for. So you want us all to get involved now in the uh, in the planning of the Uptown Master Plan? <laughs> I, I, I do, because okay. I value your input. And especially, you know, you all have been doing this much longer than I have. And I think it's just a little gem that needs to be kind of dug up a little bit more. And I... I um, like I said, I think you'd really be surprised. We have a, a we we have a lot of opportunity up there. Um, I agree. I, it's a blank think, slate. Let's yeah, let's. It, it's a blank slate. And I think yes, I I do want all five of you. I really don't want you to touch my park, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I I invite you to touch the rest of Uptown because I. I, um, I know there's opportunity, but I don't have the ideas necessarily. And I think your combined collective wisdom, I think we could create something really cool up there. Okay. Hey, I'd love to be involved with that. Okay. Uh, Vice Mayor, do you have any comments? Uh, no, actually, I, I, I like what I'm reading and I like what I'm hearing and I, I, I'm good with this. Okay. Uh, any, any further? Commissioner? Sorry, Mayor, yes. I just wanted to ch check with Commissioner Moritis. So I'm all in to help with the Uptown Master Plan as well. Is that, are you good keeping it as a priority um, where it is now, Heather? Or? Yes, well, we do have the $100,000 um, allocated. So a person, a consultant will start soon. I just really want the commission to think more about this as opposed to me, because I it really are the city and the business leaders, you know, all of us to put the same level of emphasis. So. I'd probably say, you know, it's going to take a couple of years, just like the downtown master plan did. But, you know, where it lands, I guess I don't really care as long as you all are kind of committed to help, help, you know, this heavy lift alongside of me and making it a priority, whether it's top or just a priority. Okay, great. Thanks. Yeah, I'm, I'm in. Okay, Commissioner McKenzie. Um, I'm good. You're good. Okay. Uh, any further words, Commissioner Sorensen? No, nope. great, thanks. Okay, so um, uh, I think this is a good list. And, and as we all know, you know, humans plan and, and God laughs. So, uh, <laughs> let, <laughs> so um, this is a great start. Here it is, January, 2021. Let's hope that we have more control of what happens during the course of the year. Um, you know, let's face it, even when we all first took office back in 2018, um, we, you know, who knew what was before us? You know, we had a lot of, you know, serious challenges and we had a lot of great opportunities. And, uh, um, and I want to thank this commission for, you know, for, you know, keeping it together and, and seizing these opportunities and making some good things happen. And if you look back in the last three years, some really, really great things have happened in our city. And, um, uh, and and a lot of them will continue to happen. I'm looking forward this year to the ribbon cutting on the new aquatic center. Uh, and hopefully next year we'll see the same kind of uh, accomplishment at the War Memorial. You know, there was a facility that was hemorrhaging money every single month. Uh, and here we're going to, you know, here's a, here's a great new facility for families to, you know, come together and uh, Really, you know, another family-friendly sporting uh, venue for for um, for our communities. So, um, and so, so you have my um, commitment that I am going to pursue this, this tunnel project. Uh, we will travel to places to uh, to make sure that what they say is real, and uh, um, and it will definitely be a game changer. I've been getting texts from people um, from people who normally would not comment on this all saying how, how great an idea this is to pursue. Um, and, uh, and I'm very happy that this, that the, the community is, um, is able to, you know, really think so far in advance of how, how we can change this whole downtown in, uh, uh, in these innovative ways. And, uh, and, and the other thing I want to say is that, um, I will continue to be our ambassador working with other cities 
like Miami and Boca, like you you saw um, uh, recently where we met, and um, and we're going to try to try to bring you know industries to our to the South Florida region. Um, but keep in mind that uh, we are the center of the South, and uh, uh, and this region, Fort Lauderdale, sits right smack in the middle. So you know that alone is a, is a great uh, calling card for anybody looking to to locate in South Florida. And uh, we have infrastructure in terms of of, um, of a great airport, uh, access to all all everywhere in the world to uh, foreign countries both in Europe and South and Central America and the Caribbean. Um, and I'll continue to, to work with, uh, with people who come to our city looking for partnerships you know, throughout the world. So uh, not only are we on the map, but we're creating the map. So um, let's con I'll continue to report any progress that I make at our commission meetings. And, uh, and it's gonna be an exciting 2021, 22 and 23. So uh, um, uh, do you have anything else you'd like to add? Uh, not on will so what we'll do from here is we'll take that and we'll come back to the commission then with uh, uh projects and things topics that meet each of those priority areas and then once we do that we'll bring it forward for adoption by the commission like we have in previous years and uh, it'll then become our work our work plan for the future. so i um, anticipate that to come back at a meeting or two from now uh, probably probably in february at some point um the balance of today um, and I think this is probably a, a little bit of a discussion. I don't know if it's going to take us all the way to one o'clock, um, but we've got a new way that we're aligning funding this year for nonprofits. And in prior years, um, we've taken requests in, I've built a budget, or former managers have built budgets and, and included in that a component of things for nonprofits, like the United Way, for example, in our funding for homelessness of $750,000 or the NSU Art Museum that has received funding or the Historic Society or the list is long. There's about 17 or 18 or 19 different uh, groups that we have um, provided funding to in the past. Last year, we uh, met with the Budget Advisory Board and asked them to be the first line of vetting um, requests for nonprofit funding. And so they have uh, taken that on with uh, a bunch of energy and uh, recognize Brian Donaldson who's in the room. Um, do you want to get come closer, Brian, for this discussion just so you're... I can hear you. You can. Let me have the speaker. I'll, I'll only speak as somebody has a question. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Um, so this year we've worked with the Budget Advisory Board to put together an application process so that people could apply for this nonprofit funding. And um, uh, the response has been overwhelming. Um, it's been overwhelming to the extent that we've had... <laughs> 109 requests for funding, where in prior years we have funded somewhere between 17 and 19. Um, which, what that means is that <laughs> so you have your be, work cut out for it's you. It's going to be tremendously uh, <laughs> difficult to narrow that down to the right number. Um, and at this point, I, don't, I can't really tell you the right amount because we haven't built that budget yet. Um, haven't even seen the tax digest yet. So way too soon to say how much money we have available in that category. But we were hoping to have a discussion with the commission today and hear what your priorities for nonprofit funding uh, would be, so that we can try to say if it if it fur if, if it's in furtherance of um, you know reducing homelessness that that's a priority of the commission. But if it's in uh, furtherance of uh, you know being I don't even know what a, a not would be, but homelessness would be a. So we have the three target areas that we've put up on the screen uh, that we will be asked for applicants. We're looking at um, in the areas of social welfare and elderly programs, arts, cultural, and historical programs, and then the final being educational <coughs> programs. Um, and so, based on the priorities that you identified this morning, we've kind of grouped them under where they there's some potential alignment. Um, that we can use as a, as a as a launch table. So, I'm just interested in hearing from the commission, and I think uh, the chair of the BAB is as well as they start to do scoring of projects or prioritization, they're going to make a recommendation to me and God bless them because now I don't have to look through all 109 and try to figure out which ones to make a um, immediate recommendation on, but we're just interested. We don't want to bring forward dollars in, in advance of nonprofits that don't meet your priorities. Um, so fair. Well, something weird is going on with the volume. We... Can't hear Chris. You were getting a ringing, Chris, or I don't know. That happens in my ears from time to time. Okay. Um, 
Are you hearing that? Right right here. Yeah, what yeah. Is the sound? It's like a feedback. It's like a feedback. Yeah, feedback. Right. It's a calibration between the two of you. Yeah. Hang on, we're just uh, we're redoing the room here so that we don't have that feedback issue. Maybe Elon Musk can set up an audio visual uh, system that uh, is a little bit more foolproof proof than what we suffered through all these years. All right, are we good? Okay, Commissioner, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, good. So I'll just uh, I'll summarize real quickly um, in case it, it was missed. We're just we're interested in hearing from the commission priorities for nonprofit funding. So as we look through 109 different applicants, um, you know what. Uh, what makes good sense to match our priorities? Because if history is indicator of the future, we're going to be telling 80 to 85 groups that applied for nonprofit funding, no. And uh, you know, when we do that, then uh, you know, I'm sure many of them will um, seek alternate paths to get back into the column of yes. And so this this will help us um, identify areas of uh, uh, funding. So um, anything to add, Brian? No, really, really, we need their feedback as to how if you, we were to pay X dollars, and we're not ready to discuss what the budget is yet. But if you look at these three categories and you had to prioritize them maybe as a percent to add up to 100% total, um, whatever that would be, how would you prioritize point number one versus point number three? Do you feel that educational programs are on equal weighting as social welfare and elderly, or is the arts and culture and historic programs, is that only a quarter of whatever we're allocating? So that we have a better idea when we're going through 109 applications, um, you know, where should we be putting our emphasis when we're looking on these um, various categories? So if you, if you as a group said, you know, this arts and cultures and historical programs need to be a cornerstone for the city. Um, and we think it should be 60 to 70%, then we would be looking at the, at the applicants which fit underneath those categories um, and be weighting those differently. If if that helps. Okay, so yeah. let me let me chime in on this. Um, <clears throat> when did we start getting in the business of elderly programs? I mean, I'm all for senior citizens. So, uh, but when did we ever start giving money to elderly? That's a new that's a new topic. Please. So we previously gave funding to aging and disability resource center. Yeah. And so yeah. There was local match to leverage. How much was that? Uh, the amount this year was forty six thousand five sixty eight. Okay. So it's typically the city would provide a local match to support a program that receives federal funds. Okay, so it was a it was a match. Right. Okay, <clears throat> but in terms of priorities, um, I think homelessness and housing opportunities and post COVID assistance to the community should really be the the banner headline in that category, not so much general social welfare initiatives enriching the lives of the elderly in the city of Fort Lauderdale. I think that this commission just now, not one person talked about elderly. So um, not that, like I said, I mean, I'm all for senior citizens uh, since I belong to that category. But uh, I do think that give, given limited resources, um, we really need to keep focusing on homelessness and housing opportunities and post COVID assistance. Do you folks agree with that? Anyone want to comment? Yeah, I, I have a couple comments. When we're looking at this entire chart, are these pass-through funds or are these general funds or a combination? It's, 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 it's general funds. Um, and one of the things we've historically looked at is not only the category in which it serves, but also what our investment leverages in the form of other available dollars. It makes great sense if we were to, you know, if we contribute a hundred thousand dollars, if it leverages a million, um, then that's 1.1 million in benefit to the city that we might have otherwise not had. So okay. we look at the category as well as what other dollars it leverages. Great. 
Sure. And, and I agree with leveraging and, and matching, you know, certain, if we can participate, obviously we can certainly help other programs more than others. But when I look at, you know, the homelessness, you know, sometimes we do receive the state money or maybe we're receiving the CARES funding. I think we need to possibly evaluate a little bit, you know, CARES funding too, or are we getting the CARES funding? And that's why I'm asking if it's a pass through, are we then able to give more to homelessness because we've received more for CARES funding? So I think this year is going to look a little different. I know we're just trying to get our priorities right now, but I guess my question, my, my thought process is if we're getting designated funds from CARES based on certain categories, obviously we're going to going to distribute those but I think you're talking above and beyond that you're saying this is in addition to CARES or state or Fed funding, it, this is this is general funding. So I kind of like to know, are we doing something in the, or, and if we are, how much, if, we're, if we are passed through in terms of homelessness, because we could be giving a million to homelessness right now, but it's already given to us from the CARES or from the state. And maybe that's enough. Maybe then we look to other areas. So. Well, that's a good point. Um, if, if we're just administrating uh, pass through funds, um, that's that's you know certainly that's one issue because I know in the past in the previous the previous administration only used pass through funds to uh, to allocate towards the homeless program as well as uh, HOPWA and things like that. But um, but this but this commission has taken it out of general funds uh, in addition to pass through funds to uh, assist uh, our efforts in trying to uh, address any, any or all of these topics, um, like, like arts and culture, uh, you know, we gave uh, general funds to the museum, for example. So, um, uh, so as I, I, I mean, I get what you're saying, but, you know, I think we should still try to identify the categories that are important to us. And uh, that gives the direction to staff of what, you know, where our priorities are. I mean, obviously, if, if there's a program to help elderly or any, uh, any affected group, um, I think it behooves us as a city to, um, to see what we can do to try to match that because it doubles the contribution or triples, whatever the case may be. Right. I guess my, my thought is, I would like us to obviously explore, and I think I think Chris and staff, you know, already do this. Are there opportunities for grant funding or federal funding or CARES first, and then maybe if they meet those, you know, goals, maybe if we fund 100% of homeless initiatives through other sources, we don't have to use general funds, and then we can give more to arts or. And also, if when I see public places and spaces, I'm thinking we have we have bond money. So I don't want to give something out of our general fund if it's already funded. That's my point. I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, ah, education, that should be school board, parks, that's bond money, homeless, maybe we have care. So that, that's just, that's where I'm coming from, but I'll listen. Okay, so I think, yeah, it's I, a, I, think I think that point's well taken. Go ahead, Commissioner. Yeah, I think that the mayor, the mayor hit it on the head because I think we had a designated department that was working on grants and we use pass-through dollars to fund most of these, if you want to call them social or what have you, these initiatives. I think we came in and we started uh, doing the arts. We did uh, more for the homeless over and beyond uh, the grant piece. And, um, and I don't want to take away from the seniors either, Mayor, because uh, if you take from them, they don't get the matching, uh, they too become a part of this homeless pot. So I think we need to um, come up with a budget of what we want to do um, in terms of uh, nonprofit dollars. And then we look at the ask, and I thought we were just going to be inclusive, let everyone apply um, because others felt like they were being left out when we just singled out homeless, arts, um, singers, if you would. Um, and that's how we got here. And so I think we need to set a budget a criteria and uh and then allow those who want to participate participate if that's what we're trying to do here and i think it is so um any mayor. other any other comments yeah mayor yes go ahead ben yeah so um yeah i think commissioner good points um and and chris correct me if i'm i'm wrong but um the 
the total allocation for nonprofits, I think that's, you're going to kind of think through that and, and that's almost determined at this point. You, you've maybe got some round numbers in terms of the whole pot, the whole pot. Is that right? Well, I don't yet because I don't know what our revenues are going to look like and we haven't made those projections yet. So um, yeah. you know, I've heard nonprofit funding could be anywhere from not allocated this year um, to, for example, the allocation was a 2.1 million there. That's the bottom of that list is what we 2.177. 2.177 million is what was allocated in the budget that we're operating under right now. So that gives you a little bit of, gotcha. the, okay. of the bookends. So, so I was just handing gotcha. so the list. What, what I, what, oh, okay. Go ahead. Who was no, go ahead. Go ahead. I just wanted to say I was handing the yeah, list. Here, here. Wait, just give me a second. I was handed a list, and let me just tell you a little bit about where, what we did last year. So the the biggest allocation was seven hundred ten thousand to the United Way for our homeless uh, efforts. Uh, then there was $500,000 that went to uh, Nova Southeastern uh, Museum of Art uh, to provide innovative art exhibitions and supplemental cultural educational enrichment programs for the people in the community. <clears throat> then the next one was Riverwalk, uh, which, which for, their, for their programming. Then there was Summer Youth uh, Employment Program, $190,000. To, uh, for for summer youth uh, job opportunities. And then Stranahan House for 100,000, uh, Historical Society 85,000, Winterfest 75,000, and then it goes down all the way to the Broward League of Cities installation dinner for $5,000. So those are the kinds of things that we gave money to in the past. And um, we don't have to do the same this year, or we, we can continue that way. I think everyone should get a copy of this uh, this list. If you, yeah, if you can email it to everybody so that we have an idea as to, uh, for example, the Sister Cities International Program, we gave 19,000, uh, but there has been some talk about internalizing that program into, into a, um, uh, one of our departments, which might uh, eliminate that allocation and just um, and you know just have it become a regular feature um, as part of a uh, as part of a uh, um, let one of our departments take over the operation of it without having to do a separate allocation to Sister Cities International. Um, so these are the types of things. So when you get this list, you know, look it over. But then at the same time. Um, uh, I think, Chris, you'll have to get with the staff and distill the list down to um, where you feel which which areas are most eligible based on the priorities. So for the first time this year, that's, that process is going to start with the recommendation that comes from the budget advisor. Okay. So there's a couple of meetings fine. that they have scheduled to go through the 109 and say, well, based upon the commission's established priorities, we think this is high for funding, low for funding, mid for funding. Um, we're just okay. gonna, we're gonna burn through these funds very quickly. And uh, um, sure. Go ahead. Wait a second. Uh, Brian Donaldson's here from the BAP. Brian. So um, it'll, just to try to recap. Um, so 17 organizations last year received a total of $2.2 million of general funds. In the past, this, this list has not really, to, Ms. to Commissioner McKenzie's point, has not been widely distributed throughout the city or the awareness that the that the city was allocating $2.2 million right. for general funds Correct. to nonprofits was not very highly publicized. So this year with your direction and with the great team here at the staff, um, BAB has taken up with partnering with, with city staff, the first way of being able to evaluate um, application applicants and we will be helping to prioritize to the city manager 
a, over 100 organizations, not 17, once the city actively publicized that there are funds available, have submitted. So the rest of the BAB members and I will be trying to rank those, prioritize those, and I know that one of our rankings is looking at the amount of matching funds. So to your point of leveraging, I know when I personally score, that will be very high in my priority of my mind so that we can make sure that we're maximizing the best return on investment from these general funds. My overall question is, I'm still not hearing as to so much how would you want to prioritize? I know that they ask now from these organizations is probably in the range of seven to eight million, which we're not going to be able to fund as a city. We went from 2.2. But you as our leaders and our commissioners and mayor, are you pleased with this return on investment of the $710,000 that went to United Way, for example? So would that free up dollars that then could go to other deserving organizations? And that's not an, a question I'm posing for an answer now, but that's something that if I was one of you, I would want to take a look at this list and give Bab some feedback as to whether or not you think it should be just another cookie cutter list and we're going to be taking and say no to 80 organizations, or should we be not really looking so much at in the past? And should we be looking at this as a new horizon? And if so, what kind of things would you prioritize if you were sitting on BAP? So my response to that would be, uh, this is a zero sum game. You start from scratch, okay? Everything's off, everything's off the table and you start you start uh, sifting through all of these requests because um, uh, because I think this is an opportunity for the city to open up and uh, be more inclusive and um, uh, and base your decisions on certain key components. You said, for example, leveraging would be an important would would, it, would bring that to a top top part of the list. Fitting in with any of these categories would be also if someone wanted to do something, you know, wanted to uh, wanted twenty five thousand dollars for, you know, uh, you know, the Greek festival. OK, well, that's not on our list. So they would they would not be eligible, you know, just as an example. All right. So um, not that it would be worthy, but uh, uh, but it's just, you know, there are certain things that you could just immediately say, you know, this doesn't qualify um, as far as your concept. This is where we want to spend, and that was that was the reason why we spent the money, and why I gave, we gave it to United Way. So, um, and I don't know if they're a part of the applications this year or not. I don't know, so we'll find out. So, um, so is that is, uh, what I just said to you, to uh, to uh, Mr. Donaldson? Is that consistent with your thinking? The rest of the commission? I, I think you hit the nail on the head. And um, again, I think how we got here was when we United Way. Um, used those dollars the first time we came back for a second um, um, go around we weren't satisfied with the mileage or the results we got and then I think the conversation started to um, to uh, take place and then it got deeper and we gave it to BAB and BAB vetted it and uh, 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 came back with we, we should be all inclusive um, with all the nonprofits, and again, I think we get more traction with match, matching dollars. I, I think you just hit it right on the head. Okay, Mayor, right. can I can I jump yes. in? Yes, Ben. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, a couple things. One, it, we I'm looking at the screen, and there's three target areas. Number one is social welfare, elderly. Number two is arts, cultural. Number three is education. Correct. Do all of the pr previous awardees fall under one of these three categories? Yes. In one way or another, yes. Correct. Do all of the 109 current applicants fall under one of these three? Well, we're going to find out. 
Yeah, they, they were required to select one of these categories in order to apply, but of course, we'll bet whether or not that as we- Yeah, but I think what Ben, out. I think what Sor Commissioner Sorensen is saying is that, let's say I was um, ABC um, reading program, and I looked at those categories, I may not have found one of those characters that I think by, by um, just the category that I may fit under and I didn't apply or or I was confused while applying. Right, exactly, Commissioner. In other words, if we're going to suggest, and I'm happy to do that in two minutes, suggest the percent allocation that should be given, but we should only suggest a percent allocation to be given if we have the totality of categories that uh, were, have been submitted. In other words, if there's a wildlife refuge that's submitted, I don't know if there is, but that doesn't seem to fall under any of these three. Correct. You, you see what I'm saying? So Yes, so that would immediately be eliminated. No, they had to pick one of the three. They had to pick one. Yeah, but how they interpret their connection to one of the three is, you know, right. open to interpretation. So, okay, you know, all right. So that's, that still helps. Yeah. So, Brian, one, thank you for doing this. Um, really, this is not, not an easy task. So, great. So, my understanding is, hey, each of the organizations should really be falling on under one of these threes. They've selected that. As you're reviewing these, if for some reason it seems like they're out of bounds, don't align with, align with whatever one or three or, or which one they selected, then that, that's kind of um, not going to be considered, I'm guessing. Um, is that, am I tracking that right? I think you're right. And, yep. um, uh, but again, we'll leave it up to the, to the BAB to be able to sift through the requests and see how, uh, you know, see how the um, the application best suits the priorities of this commission. You know, I sat on a, on, a, on a foundation board. I still sit on a foundation board. And over the years, you know, uh, we gave money out, still give money out every year to people who apply for it. Uh, we have a mission statement, and this is essentially our mission statement. And we try to figure out, you know, how did the application apply to the mission? And um, you'd be, you know, I mean, it's obvious people are going to be very creative in their interpretation of that mission and how it relates to their request for money. But, uh, but in this case, we're going to leave it up to the BAB to make that, uh, make those choices and then present them to us. Um, yep. Great. So, so, so yep. let's, at this point. So I, I have a few more comments. Oh, um, okay, go ahead. Talk? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, please go ahead. Okay. So. Number one, I, I th here's here, one. I think Mission United, through its partner agencies, Hope's ha Broward Housing Solutions, Hope South Florida Memorial Healthcare, Showering Love, Salvation Army. These are all the entities that that, that money has gone to. I think that we're getting really good results, and and uh, it's an important initiative. Here's my suggestion, just to throw numbers out here, so we can get Brian what he uh, and and then just to start. Uh, let's look at the hundred percent of the pie and just allocate it based allocate it towards these items. So here's a suggestion. Social welfare, 50% of whatever we spend could should be spent on social welfare programs, 50%. Arts, cultural, and historical programs, 25%, 25% of the total. Education programs, 25%. Just, just a starting point or thought. Thanks, Mayor. But, 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 but Ben, what happens if, what happens if uh, not enough people have applied under that certain category to justify a 25% allocation? You know, you're, you're, you're prejudging the results, uh, and that's why I think we need to defer to the BAB to let them go through all this. These are our priorities. You know, I happen to think that education is really very important, and, uh, and, and what the Education Advisory Board has come up with uh, some of the initiatives that they've recommended, um, you know, what is the first thing that companies ask for when they think about relocating to a, a city? The first thing that's on their mind is how is your school system? And, uh, um, you know, and, that, and we're kind of weak in that regard. And anything we can do as a city to augment the, the uh, education programs, I think, uh, behooves us going forward. So I don't know if you, I, I don't know if I'm on board with, you know, allocating percentages because I think that ties the hands of this of the BAB who is trying to come up with recommendations. 
Yeah, I think I, I like the bad betting. Yeah, I like them betting it too. I don't think it's good for us to put percentages right now. I think it's the cart before the horse. Um, Mayor, I have a question. What happened to all of the monies that we allocated in this last round when events did not happen? Like I'm like uh, like Winterfest. And I'm looking at the list that Greg forwarded to us, the email, and uh, St. Patrick's Day Parade is another one, I guess. I guess, what happened to those dollars? So the Winterfest one I'm aware of um, had some, even though the, the parade itself didn't happen, Winterfest celebrated it, its 49th anniversary by doing other things in the form of uh, a television show and, and other other things as a replacement this year. So I believe that we, you know, it's a, it's a direct reimbursement based upon actual expense. So I'd have to pull the, the details, but there was, we haven't received it yet. So. Uh, when we do and if we do, then that will be the point that we would make that uh, um, reimbursement. St. Patrick's Day, I know we were right up uh, on the date when we decided that COVID was going to cancel everything. So I think it was already spent prior to the, the parade itself. Commissioner okay. Rodriguez, you would want to say something. Yeah. Steve, are you done? Yes, I am. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm looking at the categories again, and I know Brian said, you know, let's see if we are matching in terms of maybe money that they've applied for. But I'd also like to try to quantify what we're currently doing. Like, Mayor, you said educational programs are important. I agree. But how much are we allocating towards the playgrounds, for example, at our public schools based on our parks bond? So I, I need to kind of see what we are giving and then so it would help me determine what I we should can give in addition to that. I, I think just to say educational in general without knowing what are we doing today to help support this and then what should we give in addition, it would help me make a decision. I think that I think that makes a lot of sense. So when, when you present your report, is there any way you can tag team with our, our budget department to see um, what would like, like, what is our parks bond money do, going for? Do we have to add more money to the general fund because someone applied for? And we don't know yet because we, you know, the, the application and the process for the, for the nonprofits was Monday evening. We're now on Friday. So we haven't even seen whether or not, um, to Commissioner Moritis' comment, there may not be any applications that have anything to do related to playgrounds or any of those type of educational right. things. Okay. So I think, you know, what I'm hearing today is, is that everyone is, is open to us looking through, looking through all these new applications and we have a team of 10, plus we have a very uh, good staff here that is helping us to go through this, that we need to look at it with open eyes and say what really makes sense and where do we think as an advisory board, the city would get a good return on investment for all citizens, because I'm not hearing any preferential difference between your three bullet points. So it really tells me let's don't put things into little boxes and let's really look at the applications and let's score them based on what we think is a community and then bring it to the city manager with our recommendation. Right, but to Commissioner Moritz's point, if there's any way um, we're, we're providing money from, from other sources. I'm sure we'll, can, that'll be a point of our conversation. Yes, right. that's a very good so, <laughs> Yeah, I, I wanna say my point too, I, and this is a little early for me to even make a decision, I need to see if we're going to have a conversation about raising our taxes, because if we're going to have a conversation about raising our millage rate this year, it's going to really change my mind about the city of Fort Lauderdale giving money from our general fund to really to nonprofits in general. I'm just going to make that statement. So also, I, I do need to understand, you know, like I said, what what money we are allocating based on different sources like bond money instead of general fund money. I think I'd like to know, um, do other cities have a percentage of their 
budget that they do give to nonprofits. You know, maybe that 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 may help make a decision how we move this forward in the future. Um, and then I, I think when we look at this list, we may need to pull certain items off of the grant process and just say these are these are budgeted. For example, the historical society. Historical society does work for us that we need them to do throughout the year. It, it, are we asking them to apply for a grant or is that something we're budgeting in a different category? Uh, I heard you say Broward League of Cities, you know, the $5,000, you know, we do belong to Broward League of Cities. Is, I, I think we should probably have a, a budget each or it should be budgeted. Um, you know, a certain amount every year. This is what we, you know, allocate towards Broward League of Cities because we are a part of that as a city, and we've made that commitment. So, um, so that that's kind of where I'm standing. I, I need to know where we are with our budget before I can decide how much I think we should give. I I don't know if other cities give general funds to nonprofits. Um, but I know we are definitely pass through. We are a pass through agent with a lot of these programs, and I want us to continue to be. And that's where Chris and his staff do such a great job of identifying grants that are available um, to our community partners that we can help, whether it's pass through or matching. I, I just think I think it's a, a little bit of a slippery slope to get get involved in the business of. Of, of giving nonprofits and, and ranking every year and, and everything else out, out of our general. Just my thoughts. All right. Any other comments? Yeah. So, Brian, do you do, are you feeling like you've got enough kind of direction and, and thoughts from the commission to to do your work? I think it's a good starting point, and it's our first year of doing this, and I think. You know, taking all of the information and the comments that all of you have provided today, I think between the budget director and the city manager and myself, we need to meet and come up with some criteria or better information to share with BAB that have not probably had time today to listen to this conversation. Because right now, if the rest of my team uh, just received an email today saying start scoring 109 people. I think they're going to be, uh, I, I would be overwhelmed. So I think we, are, we need to meet and give some direction. And you know what? This is an, a, an open, fluid thing. We scheduled an extra meeting in February. We felt so strongly about it. Uh, Bab volunteered to add an extra meeting. So we have two meetings in, in February to discuss just this. Um, and if we have to add some additional things in future months, and I think it'll be a work in process as we move through the budget to Commissioner Moritis's um, question or comment, it's too early in the cycle to discuss whether or not BAB is going to um, advise a um, increase or a flat in the ad valorem. But that is our job to work with the city manager and vet all of the budget. And then we will give you our opinion as to whether or not the city needs to consider an ad valorem increase or if we feel as if we can go into a 15th year flat. But okay, we won't great. be committing to that today. Yep. Okay. And then you'll reach out to us as a commission to say, hey, here's what we need or, you know, input or guidance or meetings or whatever. Is that right, Brian? Yes. As we have in the past done our communications to the commission, um, that's something that we as a group then have to vote on. And then we share that through the city manager. Um, I can tell you that as a, a uh, you know, as a published chairman of the Budget Advisory Board and the fact that my name and phone number are on the city website for being an HOA president, I can tell you that I've been actively um, pursued by various nonprofits as to how I would be scoring their nonprofit and how I would help influence BAB, um, which I will not be trying to put my own spin on this. Um, I think that in the last couple of years on BAB, I've made it very clear I'm try to be Switzerland and I'm party neutral. Um, so as a team, I'm sure the rest of the band members have been approached as well, but we will be discussing it in an open forum during our BAB meetings. 
Um, if, I, if any of you, um, of the fives, want to approach me separately, um, obviously you can, but I can't share, as you know, from Sunshine Laws, what anyone's other opinions are on different topics. Yep, great. That sounds good, Brian. Thank, thank you. Thanks. Any other comments or, or questions of Brian? Okay. Anything else, Chris? That's where we were hoping to get this morning. So, okay. uh, um, everybody got a little, got a little bit early. I think uh, let me look to our team and say, does anybody have anything open or unanswered? Laura, Erica, you're good to take this and move this forward so we can bring it back. Ingrid, you good? Okay, great. Okay, so this workshop is now concluded. Thank you, everybody. Thank y'all.